Hey everybody, Ken Bloom here with another edition of Force 5. If you've not seen the show, it's where I ask an incredible guest on the show, a, a collector extraordinaire, to talk to me about their five favorite Star Wars figures. Any scale, any era, we're just going to have some fun. And speaking of fun, Paul Sun Young Lee is my guest today. You may know, I hope, listen, you know him from Kim's Convenience. You knew you were going to know him from Avatar, The Last Airbender coming up, but also a member of the Star Wars universe, not just the Mandalorian. Who knows? He may be in other things. He can't tell us. He won't tell us. They'll come for him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time coming. I know we've been talking about this for a while, so it's nice to finally be able to carve out some time. You've never stopped moving. You are just constantly. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been very fortunate. What can I say? You know, I just, uh, it, it's been, yeah, it's been a hustle <laughs> for the last like year or so. Like, but right, as an actor, you've worked to get to this point. It's, it's, it's nice yeah. to feel things rolling off to the next thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things of be careful what you wish for, cause you might actually get it. <laughs> and, uh, so it's, it's good. It's, it's really nice to be able to, uh, uh, enjoy the fruits of my labor, so to speak, and, and to be able to go off and do exciting things like avatar and like, Mandalorian. I mean, it's no secret now I'm going to be in Mandalorian season three. They let that leak during Star Wars Celebration, um, which was a relief because now I don't have to, I don't have to be quiet about it anymore. No, no more mayonnaise commercials. Yeah, no more, no more mayo commercials. No, no, no. <laughs> Although now, Hellman's, reach yeah. out. Well, you know, you would think. You would think. But uh, it's, uh, I like Hellman's. Hellman's is a good mayo. What's your go-to mayo? Because obviously I, it wasn't Hellman's that came straight to mind. No, actually it is. I, or are I you like any Hellman's. mayo in a storm? No, 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 no. I'm like, uh, you know, Miracle Whip is like mayo, po like a, a sandwich spread. Miracle po Whip is a dessert. As, yeah, that's the thing, right? It's a sandwich spread. It's like, no, no, no. no Mayonnaise, no. real eggs. Um, Hellman's Miracle Whip is when you've surrendered. That's when you've given up. Yeah. When you switch yeah. just to jogging pants with the tie. Yeah. No more belts. No more. I'm going to put this on bologna and white bread. There you go. Just to feel <laughs> like I'm alive. Forget butter. We're just going to go straight yes. to the Miracle Whip. <laughs> it's not a real thing. It's, it was made in a factory. It's all chemicals. Just like bologna. Just like bologna. You know, that's why it's the perfect pairing. Everyone should try it. That's my culinary tip. Try white bread, bologna, and Miracle Whip. You know what I've heard, too? It may, if you, if you want to use for grilled cheese, instead of butter on the outside, try mayonnaise. Oh, you, oh. yeah. Try that. I've, I've seen it. Tried it. It's it's is it, a, is it a game changer? Yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is. So just say, and I love butter. I mean, if I go to the movie theater, I need buttered popcorn. No other, no other flavoring, just the butter and the salt. That's it. But butter is is dairy and oil. And it's yep. so you're getting that with I mean there's oil and mayo, and you just yes. swap. I don't know out. if I'd want to put melted mayo on my popcorn though. But have you tried it? No, well, that's something to do now. Yeah. No, Let's go. No. Oh. <laughs> also, the idea of pouring hot mayo over popcorn now is the <laughs> only thing that's living in my head. <laughs> it's going to be living rent free for a while. Oh, mm. just a hot mayo pump at the movies. And one day you just go wake up in a cold sweat. That's it. We're doing yeah. it right now. Yeah. Oh, is this how I know I'm in a different reality? There's mayo pumps at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> so starting off, I kind of, I'm interested in your collecting journey. Yeah and when that sort of started for you because we're we're similar age we are of that that original star wars generation and the original run so mm -hmm. when when did you first become aware and catch that collecting bug when i was five years old and star wars first came out first of all it was a seminal movie experience for me because it was the first movie my dad took my sister and i to see in the theaters and that blew my my little five-year-old mind because everything suddenly became about star wars and i do remember going to summer camps and all the kids reenacting the scenes from Star Wars. So we're talking the boarding of the tent of four and all of the cool kids were on the Imperial side and Darth Vader was the coolest kid, you know, and the stormtroopers and all the scuds, all the, all the, the little kids, the, we're the rebel soldiers who were <laughs> cannon fodder. Right. And so I died many deaths as a rebel trooper, but, um, I remember getting my first action figure from that. And I remember it, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize that. Uh, you know, there's that big wait where they had the cards going out, the reservations. Like, hey, the toys aren't ready yet, but you know, you'll you'll get one if you have this reservation. Here's paper. 
Exactly. In lieu of the actual toy, here's a piece of paper, kind of like money. Um, so, you know, the first figure that I got, because I really, really wanted uh, a stormtrooper. I just thought they looked cool. And um, the first figure I got was a stormtrooper and uh, immediately lost the gun, which I was like, just that was devastating for me because like I, I just loved it was just, you know, it's like, oh, my God, it's perfect. As a kid, you think it's exactly the way it is on the screen. <laughs> was not but uh but i do remember that and like that kind of started my journey onto it and uh i do remember as well being super jealous there's always that one kid in the neighborhood whose parents get them every single action figure and so that was jonathan he got he had all the action figures and it was just like oh so much fun playing at his place did he have um, more than one stormtrooper because that was the also the mark of the kid that yeah you have yeah doubles. Had, like, i think he had now here's the thing he had at least three. Oh, he had at least three. Who was this rich kid? So I, you know, that's the thing, right? Immigrant parents who are like professionals who like don't spend time with their kids. So they buy them toys to compensate. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, he had a very <laughs> loving family. Um, and uh, yeah, no, he's just one of those kids that just had all. I think he and his brother, because he had a younger brother named Joseph. And I think they pooled resources. So it was kind of like both of theirs, all of theirs. And stuff, right. Sort of explained some of the doubles. Because sometimes when you have kids, like one guy's got to have, you know, you can't have one separate. I know, but this is a triple trooper kid. This isn't yeah. just a double trooper kid. What can I say? Anyways, <laughs> but then I do remember for, uh, you know, Empire Strikes Back, that's when I really, really started getting into the action figures too. So I remember I got, I had Hoth, Han Solo, I had Lobot, Lando Calrissian. Um, I think that's when I got, Did I, I had Boba Fett. I had Boba Fett. I remember that. I was just, I remember trying to get the rocket to come out of his, but you know, <laughs> at that it point, looked like, like it should come out. Right. And you're like, eh, no, it's, it's not coming out. It's not coming out. And, um, uh, snow stormtrooper. Do you remember that? Did not have a Luke. I think I had a Leia and a Darth Vader. Um, and you know, I remember getting the, the, uh, star destroyer set. I also got the ATST, which was, Kind of like I wanted the ad at, but I got the ATST and I was like, oh, okay. So I made him dance because you would click on the back and the legs would click. Yeah, well, well, chicken walker. Exactly. We'll do, right? we'll do his chicken dance for you. And we're doing that. I got the Falcon, the Millennium Falcon, or as my mom called it, the Millennium Panko, because she couldn't say Falcon. So we just, I thought that was great. Um, yeah. And, and, so and that toy was great. I mean, because you could actually hold and fly that thing oh, around. Yeah. Holding that, that main landing gear was genius. Having it come down, that was the main. That was the handle right there. The only thing that really bothered me about it was the fact that you couldn't fit, like the, the canopy wouldn't close properly. It was always sort of <laughs> pop open. And like, I was a bit of an OCD kid. And I was like, why won't it stay shut? Yeah. Come on, Han, uh, work with me here. Right? And I hated Dude. the gun because you had to like the main uh, gun turret because like the, the, you know, five points of articulation figures, they had to be sitting, but upside down. And they would always slide out of that, that crazy blue seat. <laughs> <laughs> which would also pop out like if you weren't kids like oh, you're like you get the figure in and then the, the chair would pop off so you'd have to oh, and how long did your training ball last before you lost it oh god that was the first thing again i lost the gun i lost the ball it's like because it was on this piece of string this thread and i remember just trying to because you had to tie it and it's like i didn't have any dexterity i could barely dye my own two shoelaces and so that was gone now, on and a thin then, piece of plastic dangling into the set right and then the uh, the the cargo bay, like the the fake the the hiding place, where that I mean that was why did they even put it didn't snap in place it just sort of sat there and if it, if anything moved the thing would slide off so it's like yeah great hiding spot guys, yeah. but it was still I mean the Falcon right so got a lot of years on that a lot of wear and tear and so I had built up and I had the Darth Vader character carrying case like the the figure carrying case which I loved. Um, and I, I played the shit out of those toys. Like just, they were, even if I still had them today, they were so beaten up because they were so loved <laughs> and so played with, like I had them underwater. I took them in the snow and the sand. Like I just played with them. Right. And so that was for me. Oh, I'm sure that R2 sticker was long gone. <laughs> R2 <laughs> Come on. Whoever thought um, that the why <laughs> stickers. Because a kid's yeah. gonna want to play with a toy in water. Yeah. My toys of that era are just so sticker heavy and none of it none of it lasted. 
I don't think it was meant to. And I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think every toy didn't uh, had stickers instead of actual paint because it was cheaper. Yeah. And just put some stickers on and there you go. Now in this day and age, what I love is the fact that you can reorder stickers. People will have them custom made so you can get replacement stickers for the Falcon for, for an X-Wing fighter. Like if you're doing that rest, some restoration stuff. I just did you, that to yeah. an X-Wing. So isn't that fantastic? Now you can go out and you can get exact replicas of the original. That are die cut that are perfectly just, oh, this is like getting a stock sticker. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's wonderful. And you can even get them in like different, you can get them in vinyl. So they'll last longer. Some or of you them. can get like different, you don't have to have red five. You can get right. different pilots right? stickers custom. on it. And that's, that's, that's the golden age that we're living in right now where you can tinker and customize. I've got a couple of um, custom Carson Teva figures that a couple of people have made for me and that's fantastic you look at they go oh my god like we're living in the future you can create your also, own how does that feel like here's my custom figure of me yeah that's that's pretty heady um it's it's surreal it's fantastic i'm I just so flattering as well and one of the questions i'm sick of answering or or not having an answer to is like when are they when is hasbro going to come out <laughs> your black series or your vintage collection or your figure like when are hot toys yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's not up to me. If it were up to me, we'd already have them. I mean, can you imagine some kid playing in the snow with their Carson Teva? The paint scraped off, so you can't even tell it's his helmet anymore. It could be any generic X-wing helmet. Right. Can you shoot at ice spiders on Maldo Crees? You know? <laughs> Great. Or like sitting behind a desk, going, "I'm not doing any. I'm not filling out any report reports." Oh, action admin Carson Teva? I would love to see action <laughs> admin Carson Teva. Just filing reports. <laughs> All he does is he throws the data pads away. I'm not <laughs> on a report. Yeah, it's just him in a wastebasket. That's right. I'll be in my X-Wing. <laughs> and 17 <laughs> data pads that you're going to lose. Why does he come with so many data pads? They're so small. He doesn't even hold them right. Why didn't he come with a blaster? He has a blaster hand, but he can't hold these data pads. That's that's the irony, the irony <laughs> of it all. <laughs> and that's why he hates filing reports. Which now, as far as if you had a, a figure of you come out, mm -hmm. what would be the, the scale and, and version of the figure that would mean the most emotionally to you? Probably. I mean, if you're just talking straight from the heart, it would be the, the 3.75 inch figure. Classic uh, five. Yeah, Point five articulation. Point articulation just because that's that's where it started. That's where it all started. That whole journey of of like seeing a toy and wanting a toy because of a movie or something. It's it, that that speaks to me. Um, I know a lot of friends who collect, and for them, the measure of some like a good character or show is when they see it and they go, "I want a toy of that." And to hear so many people say, "Where's your toy? We want to have a, a an action figure of you." Um, it means a lot, you know, it's, it is so, uh, it's humbling that people can connect and they like the character that I get to play. Um, and, and they want it on their shelf. They want, yeah. And just the mere fact, because for me, the baggage is, this is an opportunity. This, this is a character that I get to play that I never thought I would be able to be in that universe because growing up star Wars didn't have a lot of Asian characters in it. Right. And that's as a fan as a lifelong fan i mean you talk about representation mattering that's huge to be able to see someone who looks like you play a, a character in a franchise that you love that means a lot and you know I, I get lots of messages from from uh different people saying hey you know growing up i didn't have an asian character to look up to but my kid does now and that means a ton and you see that the effect that it has and so you know there there's a group there are groups out there who go oh it's it's woke affirmative action bs and it's a social justice warrior agenda and it's like it's not it is really taking something and opening it up to fans who've never been represented it's not a man i think well there's nothing wrong with it being a mandate either like this is something that should be shared for everybody everybody should have that shared experience right and if it means seeing a character that represents them when and that really bothers some people it like that i don't know that makes me wonder sometimes because it's like that joy should not be gate yeah, or exclusive it, that's exactly it it shouldn't be exclusive that's the thing 
right. fan is a fan. And if you want to see yourself represented up there, you should be able to. And there are many other, like there's so much, when you look at the, the ratio of representation there, right? It, it's still imbalanced and making corrections to make it more balanced in a galaxy far, far away. You're telling me in a universe as big as Star Wars, you cannot have that diversity. It also and, is entirely fictional and yeah. anything can happen in it. Well, I mean, and how honestly insecure do you have to be to feel threatened by any sort of diversity? <laughs> right. like, well, that's not my story. That doesn't represent me. It's like, yeah, but you have thousands, literally thousands of other characters that do represent who you might look like. Right. So, and also, you know, if you want to be that closed minded, go watch your little pocket uh, of ignorance, ignoring everything else around you. So I, I live in your hole. <laughs> it speaks to different, I, I honestly, deeper, deeper, much deeper issues. Um, and something as joyful as like plastic spacemen, you know, flying around should just be like, it is what it is. So, you know, if, if people are fans of it, let them enjoy it. Like, how does that, how does that take away from your enjoyment to see other people enjoying the same thing that you enjoy? You know, it's like, right. it's or, not or, cool. like, or even not... when it comes to toys release, it's like, okay, if you don't want it, don't buy it, but I'll, allow someone else to buy it if they want it. And, and that's the biggest thing, isn't it? It's like, no one's cramming it down your throat, <laughs> throat saying, you must buy this. Yeah. I don't want it. It's like, yeah, you might, you know, no one's well, doing we already it. deducted from your paycheck. Yeah. It's coming to you anyway. Exactly. Right. So that kills. And like people complain about movies before they even come out. And it's like, well, you're going to watch it anyways, because I hear, you know, people like, like to just complain about things that oh this is gonna be terrible like i'm hearing this about avatar where they're saying it's gonna suck it's like we haven't released a single image <laughs> and people are always it's gonna suck the original creators they left screw these guys oh my god it's gonna be terrible they better not do what the anybody Shyamalan did and it's like i i just want to say well you're gonna watch it anyways the amount of complaining you're doing i know you're gonna watch it just to hate watch it and here's the thing if you really feel that strongly about something you've never seen before, then don't see it. Yeah. It's very simple. No one's forcing you. Don't and let your pocketbook speak. If you don't watch it, then the numbers will go down and, and whatever. But the thing is, people will want to watch it no matter what. I think if they want to hate on it, if they want to watch it just to um, to see what it's going to be like, whether they're fans of it. Um, it it's just one of those things where it's going to get the views. Uh, but I think but also, Lately, there's so much been, content. Yeah, so but and we've content. been focusing so much on the negative. I mean, we've become such, we've become so critical of everything sight unseen. It's just like, it's in our nature to just shit all over something before we've even seen anything based on what we think we've heard or somebody speculating who often has no idea what they're talking about. And people make such huge leaps in logic or guesswork and then you know, on shows you see them, they're bitterly disappointed that their expectations, what they predicted would happen, didn't happen. So they get really mad and upset about that. But then when it does happen, they go, well, that was predictable. It's like, <laughs> well, how are you going to win? Like, seeing, what's going on? Seeing people try and adjust to episodic television, the way the Disney Plus shows, <laughs> it's like, just wait. You yeah. can judge. You can, when it's all done, but you don't know where the character is going to go yet. Or what's going to happen? It's like right? it's like putting a book down halfway, going. They're never going to throw that ring away, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, it's like, never going. This is going nowhere. They're just wandering around talking to elves and stuff. I don't. What is going on here? There are two whole books left. Just yeah. wait. <laughs> also, more Shire. Right, more Shire. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's it's funny. I think it's funny, and I think. It's it really is a case of attention getting too. like people the the squeaky uh, wheel gets the grease type thing. But it's like I think nowadays people want attention. They don't care if it's negative attention or positive attention. But I think. You know, people like to watch car crashes sometimes or like people fall in skating competitions to watch just just in case somebody wipes out. And I think that's there's a danger in that because what it really does pull away from is the positivity of the content of the fact that these are franchises that are decades old that are having a resurgence. There's new, there are new fans. There's, you know, there's so much good that can come from it too. But if you choose to just complain about it right away, eventually the ones who make the product will go, well, why do we bother? So we won't, do you remember there was a time where there was no Star Wars new content, you know, 
on film or TV. What do you mean? There's a book. There's a book out. I have to, that I can read that has these characters. I'll go read that book. Right. So now we're at the golden age. We're like they're making content hand over fist, and all we've learned to do it doesn't is- end. It, right. Like if you, you don't know? like this one, wait five minutes. See yeah. if you like the. And you know what? If you don't like the things, there are yeah. other things. There's so many other things. Go try the other things. But the level of scrutiny now, too, that everything, like, people literally take an electron microscope and crawl up the ass of a show, and they dissect every single little beat and have the time to criticize all that stuff. And it's just like, I, I think there's, there's room for critical discourse. There must be. And I think that's great. But if you're going to take little niggly, little teeny tiny ticky tacky things and really open them up it's just you kind of go wow okay maybe that wasn't the focus and star wars is not something to nitpick because you can pull threads right from the start if you really want to go well this doesn't fit into canon it was like did you watch the original three yeah there are whole things that don't line up in that don't track what obi-wan says if you want (laughs) want to be upset about canon right So. so it you know i've reached you know certainly i you know, i think as as fans do we've have our journey of things like i but i've reached a point of a zen it's fine yeah i'm just going to enjoy the thing for what it is i can choose to stop watching i can choose to move on i can but i also it is what it is and there's another thing that's going to be right up next yeah and as you said we're so spoiled like yeah. the idea that we've had now one two three four four star wars series not even counting the animation right that we've had hundreds of hours of star wars content is mind-boggling to me when we were you know in the dying days of star wars grasping onto droids right and ewoks (laughs) caravan of hope here we go yeah or the ewok tv movies and going i mean it's it's they were in the movie. They're still there. This is Star Wars. Not knowing that there was, as you said, a desert ahead. Yeah. For right. so long. Which was only, you know, truly interrupted with new content movie-wise when the prequels came out. I mean, special editions, great, but it's largely what we've seen, just able to see it on screen with some new bells and whistles. Mm-hmm. But the idea that there's a new story being created was enjoy the times if not find something else (laughs) (laughs) so with that being said we should start okay so so i did surprise you and this seems to be a surprise i've mentioned this now to all of my guests that they actually have to rank these so you've you've chosen your five but now i'm asking you to rank from five to one yeah yeah you have to and you said it's a transitory thing yeah this, this 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 changes uh, based on figures that are coming out. Uh, I mean, it's that new toy rush. When you get it in, you open it and go, wow. And it, it, it's, it's, it's still that wow factor of a lot of things. Um, now, these are, they all have to be Star Wars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll put these, these ones away. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but we can talk about your honorable mentions. Yeah. I don't care. We'll talk about anything. Yeah. Uh, well, number five would have to be the one that sort of got me uh, started down the one six scale rabbit hole. And that would be the uh, Princess Leia Hoth edition. That's the first hot toy I got. I bought off a friend who was, it was unopened. Um, he had purchased it a, you know, a few years ago with the full intention of displaying it. And he suddenly realized he did not have the space or the time to do it. And so he wanted to sell it to somebody who would display, enjoy it properly. And so I got it for a song. Like, I think I got it for the amount that he just paid retail for. So I got it for about $250. And if you look on eBay, they go anywhere from four to $600. And they sold out quick. Yeah. And so I remember um, opening that. And ironically enough, as you see in the display behind me, uh, I've been home for like the last couple of weeks or so. um, And I came home after being away for six months and pre-ordering things as retail therapy and, and legit pre-orders that have been delayed that did come in while I was away. So I have stack, I had stacks and stacks of box. <laughs> it was like uh, the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, down here. And my wife was like, what are you going to do with all of this? Because there's no room. 
and she stacked it everywhere, like underneath my desk, on top of the chair. <laughs> like I, I, this is me it's, carving it's it all. It's different when it doesn't trickle in. When you're yeah. suddenly presented with the oh, yeah, it's like I've, uh, I've built a fort. Exactly, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> it. So it, like it's like oh, so this is I've seen these places on TV on like hoarders, but uh, this is like legit just mine. Uh, so. Uh, ironically, she's buried in the back room there because I'm trying to curate, if you can see back here. Um, wait. Here's the good thing, is I can uh, hold her up for here, you. There you go. There you go. So the face sculpt is what killed me. Uh, that is Carrie Fisher, uh, a young Carrie Fisher. I love the paint app on that. Is absolutely gorgeous. Kind of creepy. Because for those of you who collect hot toys, you know, they have a plastic bag with a face to keep it from getting scratched in transit. So it kind of looks like a miniature serial killer is just buried yeah. a body right there. Yeah, you, but you've just the, been delivered. Yeah. And it's like her lips are so like the, the sheen, the paint application. It looks like she's got she just had lipstick applied to it. Her eyes. They, to me, they're alive. Oh, so she's judging you. What's great yeah. is it captures that she is really just judging you. And that's that's for me, that's that's the essence of Princess Leia. She is uh in charge, right? She you, you look at her, she's got a very commanding presence to her. She's there, she's ready to kick ass. I love the pose that you've given to her with her uh, DH17. Um or is that the 18? I think it's the 17. And uh, yeah, like that's that's the 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 yeah, blast she's ready level, to... rebel forces. Yeah, she's ready to kick ass. And what I loved too was because I had never at that point the most detail that I'd ever seen was the Black Series six inch figs, and you it's an it's a deluxe version if there's a cloth piece of like soft part, but most of the time it's it's plastic or rubber that's been molded. This is you look at the scale of it, you look at the stitching on it. The detail I'd never ever seen like that, and so that was truly like just. Yeah, it's like you've shrunk, you've shrunk yeah. the costuming down. You're getting a, a reproduction of the costuming as well. And that's so hard to do at that scale. Like she's got a like it's Velcro, but some of them have zippers, where he's got a teeny tiny little zipper that goes up <laughs> and down. Like I just unboxed the uh, Luke Skywalker uh, Hoth, um, the the snow speeder pilot, and I had to remove his flight jacket and the flak vest and the chest box with the little buckles. I needed to use <laughs> tweezers uh, and his flight suit had a bloody zipper on it. I thought, oh, Holy it, crap. It, it's astonishing in scale what they can do. Yeah. And still have it look um, accurate to scale yeah. that down. There are certain figs like, and I'll show you, uh, and this is, you and I both remember the 12 inch figures from yeah. Kenner in the late seventies with the, you know, they had, here. they had some scaling issues. <laughs> With yeah. the clothing and that's the thing because then you have you have this isn't bad but this is quint sam quint from from jaws uh and he's his is close but it looks the clothing is just a bit too big right the scaling it's just a bit puffy right. it's a bit it dull, doesn't sit right. quite well like it's yeah. like it actually has bounce to it it's like it's not resting yeah that's the thing remarkable as you said about hot toys is the clothes rest yeah, like they would if there was weight of, of actual clothing. Yeah, yeah, and that is that's spectacular. And so, and, and then added to that, it's just the different points of articulation, the different hands, the different. Uh, for a lot of the hot toys, you'll get a different head as well that you can swap out. The, the accessories are. Let's see if I can actually get her out. Speaking of Princess Leia's, I don't know if you have this one in your collection. What? Oh no. Well, I'll fix this real quick. <laughs> you didn't see that, right? That I was... know exactly what happened because it's happened. So I've seen enough times. of your fun boxing <laughs> to know that this has happened. Okay, so now we fixed it. Okay. Yeah. There you Which go. I understand is a hard one to find now. It is. Look at that. And as you said, the joy of this posing. But this, we've seen enough Black Series figures try and do this dress. Yeah. And have it lay in anything approximating, like, oh, that hood? Exactly, right? We've all dealt with puffy hood yeah. when it comes to a Black Series figure. 
and and that's the thing that's if they attempt the cloth to do the stuff like a lot of times they'll just it's easier for them to just mold it or in, sleeves in yeah and it's just like there's no pliability to it it's like it's a chunky sort of solid casted bit it's so, a slippery slope. I mean, as you yeah. said, when you when you are like Black Series, oh, this is great. This is amazing. These sculpts are. I mean, once you start getting into. <laughs> so that Leia, Carrie yeah. Fisher led you astray. Yeah, that was just I was, and then after that, I thought, wow, if this is the level of quality for Hot Toys, sign me up. <laughs> and um, yeah, I fell down. The rabbit hole super hard like it it's 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 so hard once you, as you said once you are holding one yeah and going oh this is like a miracle this yeah. is yeah this is like the ultimate this is what you always wanted a figure to be yeah yeah and, in and, your imagination and just the posability of it too like the different points of articulation it's not you know it's it, it we've come a long way from a three and three quarter inch five you know, the arms go straight, the legs go straight. I remember feeling so jealous that all of my friends, I, I never got into collecting G.I. Joes because I knew I just needed to stay in my lane. That was Star Wars. But the <laughs> Joes were always, they, my friends would always brag, my G.I. Joes are better because I think they can bend their knees. And they, we can have them, you know, like bend their elbows and their, their wrists. And it was just like, eh, hey, my guys walk like this. Um, <laughs> and so this is what I love about the Hot Toys is, you know, the, the butterfly joints, the different, like the double knee joints, the double elbow joints, the ratchet um, joints where you can pose them in dynamic positions. Oh, it sounds so dirty. Um, and, <laughs> and like do like the one six scale photography where you can actually have like make a maquette or put a digital backdrop to it or do all sorts of real. I mean, that's the adult version of playing in the sandbox and in the snowbanks and in the swimming pool is creating a dynamic sort of scene with these one six scale figures and taking pictures and that's something that i am i mean that's why i'm i'm slowly building up my army of of troopers and i've got you know the remnant troopers three death troopers now that was an accident <laughs> <laughs> you know uh two course on full right? triple trooper well that's the thing right like it was just uh <laughs> well i have two so i got two death troopers because you know it's like sith you always see them in pairs right and so I got two, and then I ordered the uh, the uh, Star Wars exclusive, uh, Star Wars uh, Celebration exclusive, the clo the black chrome plated one from Sideshow. Right. Okay, so that makes three. It's like okay, but one's a con exclusive, so the, he 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 will stand on his own type thing. But you always have to have more than one, right? Unless it's a commander, like the shore troopers. I, I didn't realize there were three variants. It was like the grunt the commander and the captain. It's like, oh, the, the squad leader and the captain. It's like, okay, so now I got all three. <laughs> but now I'm like, okay, how do I do this? Because they could be put in the same, I've got the DTOF ca uh, cases from Ikea. But if you look in that corner there, I've got, I collect buckets as well. And so like, I've been trying to pair the hot toy with the with bucket. The, oh, brilliant. Right? There's not enough room to put the other two in there, so it's like, oh, one of them's going to be separate, and so. But or you need to start like as a museum curating, like I'm going to swap the collects, the displays out, and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm starting. It's got to be a rotation. It's Give everything a little bit of time in yeah. the spotlight. Why? Well, yeah. I, I don't know if uh, you started doing this yet, but you know, obviously facing the same space issues with display, uh, creative ways of of doing the using the dynamic stand. Yeah. But I'll get. Uh, an alligator clip okay and take the dynamic flight stand and feed right. it through the clip and oh. put it on the edge of a shelf so it looks like they're that's, in flight that's so smart oh so you're adding that. i'll send yeah. you pictures later yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's levels right yeah. different levels like like back there i've got you know the artillery trooper the uh, uh like commander stormtrooper commander got a remnant trooper and a, a speeder a, a scout trooper for mandalorian they're all four in there but if i had because i'm going to put a little riser back there so the ones in the back just have that bit of elevation so you can see them a little bit better and i'm trying to get it so that uh i, I think i might have to remove the stands though to get that well the, height. and the, but that's the great thing about is generally the joints are strong enough that yeah. you can find the sweet spot of of posability yeah for them 
like most of them, mine do not have stamps. Right. Okay. They're they're just freestanding. I I, I kind of just like the little plaque on the front that says what it is. But now I'm like, we all do. I, but once you you go too deep into it, you can't yeah. afford that space. Yeah. You can't I, do I, it. I, that's exactly it. So it's like it's like school photos, right? In the front row, down, right? So they uh, play with the different <laughs> levels. The back row, you get to stand, and so like I'll be able to get, and you can get more figures in. Like I should be able to fit six in there in a space of four. Get rid of the stands, right, and, and stuff. And so, yeah, course on guards. Got to have two. Can't just have the one. They come yeah. in a pair. Um, but at any, oh. I recommend anyone that has a jetpack or flight capability, or yeah. or now I'm even looking at because I got the Darth Maul and Ahsoka. Because I know you got the yeah. Maul in, right? Did you get the Ahsoka yep. as well? Ahsoka just charged, and I just got the notification. DHL's delivering it. I, so. I did an unboxing of Ahsoka last week. Uh, but what I'm going to do is they didn't come with the dynamic stands, the gooseneck oh. stands, which is okay. stunning. So I'm going to get third party, but I'm going to do the mid fight pose off oh. the edge of the shelf. So you can actually have the full dynamic beautiful display. But nice. again, it might like that Dr. Strange, you see, yeah. he's on fishing line. So it looks like he's, he's levitating. That's why he's spinning every once in a while. <laughs> That's cool though. Uh, and the Harry Potter is also on fishing line in the flight pose. Nice. Oh yeah, with the on on the Nimbus two thousand. Yeah, yeah, or three thousand. Is it three thousand at that point? Uh, but yeah, so he's right there. The strange right there. Uh, so yeah, yeah, using those yeah. when you get to a certain critical mass, where you're going, well, what am I gonna do? <laughs> so it helps when you have like Iron Man. Of course, Iron Man can fly. So of yeah. course he's gonna be. And then you start justifying action poses they just leapt off of things so they can be in flight you know but then see and here's the thing here's a slippery slope for me so i have the uh scout trooper the the mandalorian season one the scout trooper with the speeder bike i love that speeder bike it's it's one six scale it's gigantic it's like i can't it won't fit in there i've got to find a separate it needs to be displayed i got to find some place to curate it like to, to set I it up I have the quarter scale. Okay. That sideshow put out Jeez. of the speeder oh, bike. It's even bigger. Even bigger. <laughs> you can ride on it almost, right? It's <laughs> one of those things like, yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, why should he have all the fun? <laughs> why can't yes. this be my dream too? And, and that's my number four is the quarter scale uh, Mandalorian and Grogu from season one. Um, I saw it uh, when I visited Sideshow and I actually did the Strike a Pose show over there uh and that's my first experience with quarter scale because it was a spider-man far from home and it went oh my god like one six scale was like oh this is this is fantastic and then quarter scale you go oh it's just a whole other level you mean there's another slippery slope after this one <laughs> i have no room but it didn't <laughs> stop me from, from ordering the deluxe set like the mandalorian quarter scale with with grogu and like he's, he's got the pram and it is I've, I've done an unboxing of it and it's just like I, it's unbelievable like you you line it up and it makes the quarter the the one six scale look like a three like six inch right it's it's like that sort of uh oh you can just do infinity figures just oh, all the way down yeah he goes so that that's my again but you're you thinking look at ahead that, one day the kids will move out of the house oh. the guest room can double as a display space i just you know what we I literally we we got uh another like an off-site storage space just for the uh, boxes just for the boxes it's now do you thing. when you do do you take all of the accessories out of the box to store away locally or do you leave the ones you're not using in the box I, I leave them in the box because the fear of losing like getting them scattered or mixed up right is for me a, because I'm a bit you know uh obsessive about that like when, when that my stormtrooper taught you a lesson yeah and you know when my kids they they've got star wars lego and i'm like okay that's cool you can break it apart to whatever but don't mix it with the regular lego that's all i ask don't do not mix this shit with that shit because this is special shit and that's like common shit but like this this whole <laughs> dad this they made star a movie stuff, about you yeah well i mean i'm not gluing it but though i i totally understand that <laughs> it's like you're never taking this apart um, but, you're the craggle dad but you know what happens is because invariably they'll break it all down, make something else, scatter the parts to the wind and go, mm, I really want this again. And it's like, okay, well, where are all the pieces in this bucket? Yes. Yeah, so good, like, good luck. 
right? So that's why I always say just keep it separate. Keep these kits, all the Star Wars stuff together, and then it's easier to sort through. And, you know, there's like there's something about that, you know, the ASMR of the sound of the bucket, the Lego pieces going <laughs> as you're rummaging through trying to find little pieces. That is my childhood in a nutshell, is hearing that the, the, the Lego pieces just right. fall as you're rummaging through. Like, I, I love that sound, but I hate having to sit there sometimes and just hunt for that one. Well, we did what you said, Dad. We took all the Star Wars apart and put them all in the same bucket. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's like saying, watch the stove. Yeah, I watch it. I watch it set on fire. I watch it just burn. It's like, yeah, but yeah. okay. There's more to it than just... Monkey paw, Dad. Monkey paw. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the turkey was dry. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what is your number four? So, number four is the quarter scale mandalorian uh and grogu just because uh again the, the the size of it it was breathtaking just sort of blew me away and, and the fact that every like you could you can add like with his ambient rifle you can open it up and take a cartridge from his boot and fit it in there and lock it that for me is next level insane like i love that i love that and that again, you have a functional operational yeah, because yeah. you're also a cosplayer. You've yeah, you built things. You you look for authenticity in recreating these things, and and that's when you can tell because a lot of cosplayers, when they don't have access to screen caps or publicity photos, and they will turn to one six scale or quarter scale if it's available, and they will study the hell out of all those, and they will extrapolate from what they see on these figures. And 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 reverse engineer it so it looks accurate for their cosplay. I love that. Like the fact that it is so accurate that they can that they can do that, right? Little things like um as well. Uh there are two different versions of of, of Grogu, the one to one scale. Sideshow had the version of the statue and Hot Toys has theirs. What, which and is my there's the Hot Toys one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got mine right behind me. Yeah. I mean they're Right. And, but and the thing is, they're not the same. They are not, they're different. And so I was, and they have, and it's really cool. Cause I had this discussion while I was on the set of the Mandalorian, uh, some of the legacy people were working on set and I just sort of sat and was having a chat. And the woman I was sitting with, she actually built the garment, like that little overcoat that he has, that Grogu has, she built it for, for legacy prod. So that's the screen used one. And she was telling me, oh, there's some special stitching on the inside and little fasteners that no one else knows about but she does because she built it and so if there's ever sort of any question like she can look at it and kind of go oh yeah that's legit or not which i love but so the one that's on the sideshow statue is more screen accurate than the one that the hot toys one has um and you can tell like the side by side you look at them and they, you know they're close but it's like uh you know having a pair of uh knockoff jeans versus the originals like real 501s versus the knockoff pair right. from Amazon. And they're just subtle differences in it in terms of the, the material used or the cut of it. And you kind of go, oh, and so like what I'm seriously tempted to do is to swap out the jacket from the sideshow one, which is more accurate and put it on the Hot Toys one. But then All I right. feel like I'm stripping the, the sideshow one of its dignity by like, <laughs> you know? It's the like Hot it's the one, one thing I had going for me solid you're taking this away from exactly. me so i kind of don't want to do that to him right there um but again it's a stunning statue but the thing that uh, and I, i'm jumping ahead anyways we're gonna get back to yeah let's let's talk about the quarter, scale. Scale. <laughs> uh, the quarter scale the 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 detail is even more evident on the uh, on the soft goods um and like right down you look at the, the stitching on the on the for the cape and on the flight suit the, the different patterns and whatnot. And you can take the, again, the armor is removable because it's a much bigger piece. So you can actually take a look at the flight suit and then the color of the flight suit, which was a huge debate. Is it brown? Is it purplish, grayish? What color? It's, it's it? the old blue brown debate. Yeah. And then it switches because in season two, they use a different color. It's like <laughs> Boba Fett, you know, Mandalorian season two Boba Fett, his costume is different from Book of Boba Fett. Like the boots, the spats, the belt, the pants, 
you know, and, and the color of the helmet. And it's hilarious because cosplayers who strive for that level of screen accuracy lose their minds because they're like, oh, like how many cosplayers rushed out to get the Durasteel version of Mandalorian? And in three episodes in, he gets that best car <laughs> armor and all across the universe, you could hear thousands of voices. I thought out. I was ready for Dragon Con. What? <laughs> so. That, I mean, that that's those things you hear about uh, on, for Dread, the movie Dread, the uh, costume designers like, yeah, screw the cosplayers. We're going to make everything custom. No real world parts <laughs> that we're going to alter. It's all custom. And so it's like, oh, and they, they did it literally. And it, they, they kind of joke about it, you know, with the costume. You say, yeah, we want to make it hard for the cosplayers to do that. You want this. <laughs> make it like we did. Work like, for it. Exactly. What was, what was the first costume you made? Uh, the original series, Star Trek, uh, it was Mr. Spock. I had had uh, a blue sort of velour uh, shirt. Uh, it had a collar. And so I remember uh, cutting the collar off. And there was still the buttons and like having, I mean, didn't look the best, but in my, like I had a black shirt that rode up and I cut the collar out of the blue shirt. Um, and I, I, I made a screen accurate sort of insignia that I glued on. Didn't sew on, glued on. How old were uh, you? I was Mr. Spock. I was. Oh, how old was I? I would have been in grade, grade five or six at so the time. Twelve. Yeah. Eleven or twelve. Yeah, Eleven or twelve. Twelve or twelve or thirteen. Twelve, because my birthday is in August. So yeah, I would, I would have been like twelve years old doing that, and this was all like my mom did not help. She's not my immigrant parents, right? Too busy working. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you're dressing up for what? <laughs> this is school assignment? You ruined that shirt. Right? It was kind of, right? <laughs> so it's like, you can't wear that anywhere else. I already had the bowl cut because that was the only cut my mom knew how to give me. So it's just like, get a plastic pair of ears, put on the blue, I had a black pair of pants. Just a bigger was, bowl each year. Yeah, that's all it was. That's all it was. So it was just like, yeah. But my first cosplay was Mr. Spock just because I could. Um, did but, you just do it the once or did you multiple times wear it? Well, that's the thing. I couldn't, I just did, it was for Halloween and I could only, get, I mean, I lived in Calgary and so there weren't very many chances for me to dress up right. in any kind of cosplay without getting beaten up. Right. So it was one of those things where I was like, oh, okay, which is fine. Cause it was just like, yeah, you were making I, a lot I, of statements at that time. Yeah. You were declaring yourself in a lot of ways with that. Well, it was just like, I love Star Trek. Up. I love cosplay. I'm having fun. And it was something I thought I could pull off, you know, that, and that's the thing. I didn't want to be the kid with, you know, the piece of tape and a, a sign that said Florida on it. I'm Florida. Like I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be well. Or the, or the store bought, you know, I don't want a Fred Flintstone face oh, and the, a picture yeah. of Fred on the chest. Right. <laughs> in, Although, my, hey, in my vinyl suit. I, I really want I really want a pair of those underoos. You know, when those, those underoos came out, I swear I did want a pair of those underoos. Not like that finally, anyone would ever see them, but it's just like, as a kid, you're like, <laughs> that looks like that's a legit Star Wars sort of uh, license. Now we're getting accurate. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Although, you know, I had like an X-Wing cockpit that I had made. Out of a cardboard, like an orange card, like a, a cardboard box that held oranges, like one of those big cardboard boxes, and you took the lid off, and I could fit in there at the time. And I meticulously, I took a marker, and I drew out in my mind what was an accurate sort of depiction of what I remember the cockpit inside of an X-wing was. And that, in my world, that was like, yeah, I'm there, I'm there, and I had. Uh, I had snow speeder. I must have had like a uh, an X-wing pilot because I remember, yeah, like playing like, and he was my co-pilot. He just sort of like I was playing in in that box with oh, my the multi-purposing things yeah. as a kid. I mean, I remember yeah. for Ghostbusters, creating a proton pack out of a concentration game with string that I I peeled apart the game, right? Put put the string through on yeah. either side for the straps. I used an old microphone, like a toy microphone, as my uh, proton uh, wand, uh, my neutrona wand. Uh, I guess I should get it right. Uh, and, and I remember the ghost I would catch was my old Rancor. 
Oh, wow. Yes. And then I would take them to the containment unit, which was my old light bright in my closet. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, right? yeah. Things like that is like, I can't afford. Oh, oh, they came out with a proton pack. That's 20 bucks. My parents are not going for that. Right. <laughs> Mine, I, you can multitask and play a game on. Yeah. I, I Well, I mean, I would build blasters out of Lego. They wouldn't last long, but like the pistols were good. Right. Oh, I mean, building these play sets out of Lego. Yeah. Yeah. I built, I built, I built Christmas display scenes for my Marvel Secret Wars figures. I mean, I have over there, I'll send you a, a picture. I have, because uh, if you remember the Marvel Secret Wars figures, mm -hmm. where like the Doctor Doom was a character I knew from Pan Fantastic Four. Right. But they just had it in the battle armor. Oh, wow. In the figure release. It's like, I don't want that. I want Doctor Doom in the, in the cape and the, the skirt. Got to be my classic Doctor Doom. So I made them out of felt. Oh, cool. I made him a full new costume. I made him a felt holster. Oh, cool. <laughs> wow. And, and two pieces of colored tape for yeah. the uh, to hold the cape on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just I taught myself to sew to make my Doctor Doom right. a new outfit. I made capes for Magneto and Kang. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. yeah, the, the joy of, of doing that and customizing. Does any photos still exist of any of the your early cosplay uh, there must be i remember seeing one because i remember being so proud uh in the gym because we had the costume parade the kids that had, that had dressed up could do it and i was very stoic and i was being mr spock and giving everybody you know just sort of like not smiling just staying in character and that was the first time you know actually just you know acting as the character like true cosplay is as well not only dressing but becoming that character was so also uh, one of your early acting experiences yeah. yeah to be honest like not even thinking about it, but yeah that was that was me like acting as mr spock as leonard nimoy i was spock and I, it was just there was something really cool about that detachment of like i'm a vulcan i do not feel human emotion and going through and just sort of like in you know kids pointing oh that's spock from from star trek and just like yes you recognize me excellent that's that's exactly what i want <laughs> So, yeah, and that, that's, you know, it opens up your, your mind to, to all these different things because it's like, I really like that. What other cosplays, are, what other characters do I want to play? And I think that's, that's the joy of, of being a fan and, and discovering all these different elements of storytelling and play, which is, I think, why I still enjoy it now because there, it, there's a quality of play in all of this. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's manifested itself in different ways, but playing is playing and the, the joy I still get from opening up, uh, a collectible or a toy is the same as when I was, you know, five or six years old, I still find derive an immense amount of pleasure from it. And I don't feel immature about it at all. You know, it, it's, I'm not hurting anybody. It makes me happy, brings me joy and uh, keeps my mind sort of creatively engaged i don't just like sort of go yeah it's cool and just put it away it's not just a, it, it is the exploration of okay well how can we how can i pose this or make it dynamic or what let's let's look at the detail and like just be blown away by the craftsmanship of everything and marvel at how far we've come over the decades in terms of what we play with or what we display or how we use our imaginations like that's for me is incredible because or i think i mean the accurate yeah the evolution I, of accuracy in products is something that i mean i i was always the kid who was like that's not on model that's not that's not what i saw in the thing that costume is not right <laughs> that doesn't look yeah. But I think, you know what, it's, it's people of our generation, too, that are now making these things or designing these things that have a mind towards that. And the technology has improved, obviously. We've got 3D scans of, of, of the characters and the actors in costume. And so they have access to all these different source materials um, now. And, and there's obviously there's a market for them because people like you and I, we buy them and we feed into it. But I think it's it's... You know, the, everybody talks about, oh, there's, a, you know, so many superhero movies and like sci-fi movies and all this kid stuff. It's like, yeah, because the kids that watch them in the day are now the ones who are greenlighting 
or commissioning them to be made. Like the geeks have inherited the earth. And now, like before, like all these franchises used to be looked down upon. Now they're mainstream, right? And that's a huge jump too. Like you, when I was a kid, I never would have thought that this stuff would have been as mainstream as it is now. Like cool, right? Before it was like, oh, Star Trek, Star Wars? Yeah, okay, nerd. Good luck with that. Oh, oh now I mean, it's wearing your novel t-shirt. Yeah. And now it's not like, the common shirt, like finding like, t-shirts with things on it was not common. No, and then now it's it's matter it's it is mainstream fashion. It's cool. Oh, you got an ironic t-shirt? Or it's like, oh my god, that's such a cool geeky shirt. I love it. Right. You know, this is and you can just buy it for the aesthetic reason. I mean, there are plenty of people that are wearing shirts that probably have no idea who oh, the character, yeah. and it's fine. It's just they aesthetically like that looks cool. Yeah. I want to wear that, and it's mainstreamed enough that that's now an art choice that people yeah. can make yeah. to express themselves. So that, that, you know, that's the progression of all that. It, it has been fantastic. And so, um, yeah, I, I mean, this is, and, and for me as well, I mean, growing up, you know, we didn't have much, my parents worked their fingers to the bone and I didn't really, like, I never felt like I was lacking anything, you know, and, and it's not till I got older, my, you know, talking to my parents, realizing how hard they had to work and how much, you know, they tried to, they, 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 they sheltered my sister and I for, we never felt like we were missing anything. They always provided for us. And so as I grew older and I suddenly had to start paying for this stuff myself, it was like, wow, this is expensive. <laughs> this is an expensive <laughs> hobby. Oh, okay. And so like, there's that dark period I call where it was just like, Limited funds, you have to allocate them to things that you really want or need, like need and then want, right? Like right. you have to take care of business first. And so with what I had left over, it was just like, well, I could get a collectible if I wanted to, or I could get these things, or I could go out on a date with a girl. And so my, my focus kind of shifted from that because I used to collect comic books and action figures, uh, all that stuff. And then I think it was like, I, I call it Operation Clean Slate because what happened was I grew up in Calgary. I went to Toronto to go to university. I said to my parents, all the shit in my room, I'm keeping, I'm keeping. Don't throw it out. Don't give it away, right? I'm coming back for it. Yeah. Like, I'm making this very explicit. Yes, absolutely. I was gone a week later. They gave all of my stuff away. <laughs> All, like <laughs> all the Star Wars toy, everything was, and I didn't find out about it till like months later, like almost a year later. And cause it was just like, I trusted them. Now, the only thing I can say is at least they gave it to somebody who was going to play with it and use it. Right. So it's like toy story. Right. You don't want to, you know, it, the, the toys are being loved and used and this and that. And I was kind of like, Oh, and it was when I realized it was all gone and it had nothing left. It was just like, I had a box of comic books. I think I was able to, that survived the purge. Is that just, um, you had them with you or? Just, no, I, I don't they, know. Or they missed it. I think they just missed it, to be honest. And uh, yeah, so that's all I have left. And it's upstairs, hidden away in, in that same. So same no one comic. does it again. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so It was I, just on set for a month. What do you? There are, yeah, there it's, <laughs> so there's that. Um, and so it, it was that whole period where it's like, I couldn't afford to buy collectibles or I chose to allocate my money away from that and towards other things that I was discovering that I was like really enjoying too, right? Um, and then, yeah, after university, it was just sort of like, you know, getting a job and stuff. And I didn't fall, get back into collecting until I think it would have been about 2000, 2004, 2003, 2004. So there's a period of five years where I just, I wasn't collecting much. And then I started getting little things here or there, right? And I remember- uh, Just impulse buys, like, oh. Yeah. This, well, this McFarland price. Toys. I think the first thing I got was a McFarland Toys. I was at Silver Snail in Toronto, which is a big comic book shop uh, and collectible store. And there was a, they had their Movie Maniacs series. Um, and it was like the one was a, it was a diorama. It was like Jaws, uh, on the oh, Oracle. I that, have that up on that shelf. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Well, Beautiful Jaws, piece. 
Yeah, it's my favorite move of all time. And I was like, oh, I need this. I need not. I want. I need this. <laughs> with a little so quint, I, I, with his yeah, little little machete. You can pull them apart and stick half of them. <laughs> yeah, in. that that was the really awkward part. It's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's playability. There you go. So I got that, and then you know, and it was like, oh, there's there's a RoboCop movie maniacs, yeah. And then there was the Alien Queen in the huge diorama with the colonists that strung up. Then you can push a little lever and have little chest bursts come out of her chest. <laughs> so disturbing, but it's like a beautifully sculpted piece. And then so little things here or there I started to get. And then, um, you know, and then we had a family. And it was just like, okay, like money's even tighter now, right? And I remember the, 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 the one piece to sort of bridge that gap. And I had to, I sort of had to beg my wife. I was like, I really want this. And I know it's so superfluous right now, given our financial situation, but like, I really want a lightsaber. I've never had a lightsaber. And the show I was working on, her stage manager, she, she collected lightsabers. And so she had like six of them. And for me, it was like, six? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no idea they had even more than six, right? And so she was collecting them. And my wife got me, uh, I still have it. It's the, um, it's the Obi-Wan Kenobi Force FX lightsaber with the thick, chunky emitter. It's right. not screen accurate whatsoever, but in my mind, it was perfect. It lit up. It made sound. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that it lit up. Yeah. Was a And accurately, too. It's, it had the Neo pixels where it went up and down. And, uh, you know, I remember taking it out on Halloween night and dressing up for the first time in a long time with my Jedi robes. Oh, and I first time you take up. one of those things up at night? Revelatory. Oh. And I was like, no, no, I'm just walking with the kids to light the way because it's dark, you know, and just using it as a cool flash. <laughs> No, I was I have, I have a photo of my nephews who must have been three and six at the time, uh, dressed as the 10th and 11th doctor from Doctor <laughs> Who. Nice. Outside fighting with Luke and Vader's lightsabers ah. with their faces lit up. Perfect. As the doctor. <laughs> That would fit too, right? That would be so canon. That would so <laughs> fit in. The Time Lords with lightsabers. I think it would be brilliant. I put this on social media. Let me see if I have the picture of them in here in my wallet. No, I don't have that one, but I do have them dressed as Indiana Jones and short. Oh, round. short round. Beautiful. Oh my god, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's great. So that is great. Yeah, so and then you know you have kids and then everything is on pause for a bit while they're toddlers. But then the thing is that when you have kids and they get to a certain age, it's like, Oh, they need toys. Hmm. I wonder what kind of toys we should get them. Oh, look, Star Wars stuff. <laughs> oh, it's, it's for them. Yeah. It's totally for them. That's where and the indoctrination begins. Yeah, you're like I'm going to guide you. Here we go. That's it. And my eldest is a, is a Star Wars nerd, which I love. Uh, Clone Wars is his jam. He knows more about Clone Wars and Rebels than I will ever know. And I love that. So he's my he's my resource guy. Like, he's the guy that I can sort of go, okay, so what is this? It's like, yeah. Oh, okay. So explain to me the timeline again. So I don't have to Google it. I just have to bug my eldest. So what about. does he collect? Does he collect as well? Is he he collects a lot of dust. No. Um, <laughs> he's, he's discovered girls as well. And so he was into Funko Pops. For, for a while, but it's like, the problem is, because I have so much stuff, he kind of looks at it as, well, that's going to be mine eventually, so I don't need to spend any <laughs> of my money. He's curating anything. your collection. Yeah, and he's right, because I, I said to him, I said to my wife, too, like, when I die, don't give this shit away. Like, I will give you the number, like, I will, we will have this, and we will, you will get your, like, we'll have an estate sale or whatever, but this stuff will be worth something, you know, at least. So don't like, I'm not going to leave you high and dry. Like this stuff will, will appreciate in value. You're not going to make like tens of thousands, but you'll get at least what I put in at the very least, right. What I paid for it in retail. So that, and that adds up, that'll add up. But you do have two kids. So are they going to fight yeah. over who gets what? I would like to think that they'd be so torn up over losing their dad that they would be happy to get whatever they want. Oh, it's <laughs> like, going to be, it's going to be a total bucket fight. You know, it's going to be a <laughs> <laughs> It'll be 50 50. As you it said, always... I could have that. That's the good Boba Fett one. That's, what, that's why there's two of them. <laughs> Is that how you're justifying it now? No, well, yeah. When I accidentally pre order yeah. stuff, like, yeah. oh, 
shoot. <laughs> I actually pre-ordered three Bo-Katans. I don't know how that happened. Uh, it was just like, I pre-ordered it. It's like, yeah, I'll get it. And then it's like, oh, I better pre-order that before they set run. And then I ordered again with other stuff. And then through another company, it's like, oh, yeah, I wanted that Bo-Katan. <laughs> So it's like, and then suddenly it's like, oh, snap. But you know, the good thing about, as you've said before on Hot Toys is, you know, you at the very least can get what you put in out of them. If you're like, I got an extra one in, does anyone want? Because usually by the time anyone gets a Hot Toys in, they're long sold out. Yeah. Because the yeah. production process takes so long. Yeah. And delivery has taken so long. And then, and that's the thing, the price is almost, it, they, they start to appreciate almost immediately when they when they come out and so like and especially after they've sold out too then it's like the aftermarket sales and you're not going to make a gold mine off of it but you'll make your money back yeah you you won't be at a loss yeah and that's that's my goal with a lot of it too and the cool thing too about having a youtube channel uh is it makes for an awesome giveaway prize as well so it's like you look at it as okay i'm investing it in that channel in the channel now this is it'll create interest people want to enter whatever contest and it just gets everybody excited for the channel because if you give away a hot toy it's like oh my god so you're saying Bo-Katan is going to be one of the giveaways I'm saying Bo-Katan will probably <laughs> be one of the giveaway prizes <laughs> oh you heard it first confirmed <laughs> it's great that you've already justified your mind well you know if I slip my finger slips Dude, eh, you're a channel builder hey you know this happened actually because I the the 20th anniversary of Clone Wars came out they drop for pre-orders, right? The uh, the clone trooper pilot, the battle droid, uh, R two D two, yet another version of R two D two, C three PO, and what was the other one? Um, it was uh, just regular clone trooper, I think. Right. So five, and I was like, okay, pre-order, 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 and I hit hit checkout, go, and nothing happened. So I was like, oh, did it not register? Click checkout again nothing happens so that's weird click 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 <laughs> nothing and then i start getting all these email notifications and it's like the your order, order confirmations oh, your order has been brought. i was like no 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 <laughs> so i had to contact sideshow so it had gone through 10 times because i was like oh that's, that's weird. not insignificant amount of money no it's that's a lot and so they like, yeah well obviously the, there's i said there's something wrong with your site they tried to blame me but i was like no your site is laggy because I've ordered through there before and it's never done this before. Right. And it also shouldn't keep confirming. No, exactly. Right. The same it's order. The same. It's the same page. There you go. So anyways, I got those all reversed, but it's still. <laughs> oh, that would have been a hell of a giveaway for the, the channel. Come on. Yeah. My wife would have been giving me away. <laughs> now you book a couple of Mayo commercials. You'll make it back. Well, that's the reason why. And, and, and that's the whole point of getting back into this. So now I'm doing. Uh, I'm making money off it, like good TV money off of it. And it's just like, and I work my ass off. And it's one of those things where it's like, everything's taken care of, right? Yeah, money's in the account for the, for the boys' education. Mortgages were good. Taxes are paid. Bills are paid. Everything, we're good. I have a little bit of money left over. Okay, you know what? I'm going to treat myself because I, I want to be able to enjoy it while I'm alive, right? And right. still... And so that's the thing. It brings me joy in it. I, it's hard to say as I sit in a box in a basement with like boxes and boxes of hot toys that I'm, I'm not living in excess, but I don't have any other vices really than just this. Right. <laughs> right. I don't do drugs. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't, you know, collect cars, like actual cars or, or like have a motorbike. And you're not going to loan sharks going, I got a hot toy payment coming. I, need, go. I, <laughs> I got all this stuff. So. Can you front me? <laughs> <laughs> and and truly though what i love too is when i do fun boxing sundays on my youtube channel it is it gives an opportunity for people who won't have access to this or on the fence about mm, should i get it or not because they're expensive to look and get a close-up look at it and have somebody who who loves them talk about the pros and cons of these figures and are they worth it are they not this and that and it's just it's great because um, I get unboxings now. Like I used to watch my kids go, you know, watch unboxings of toys. And go, why are you doing that? This has got to be brutal, right? Like this is right. something that Who wants to watch someone play a game. Why don't you exactly. just play the game? But it, it's, there's something really <laughs> enjoyable about that. And you learn a lot from it. And it's like, oh, I get it now. I get it after having done a bunch. And so that's, that's another cool thing too. And it is a legit sort of 
business thing for for my YouTube channel, like growing the, the channel from its beginning, humble beginnings at uh, the beginning of the pandemic, when it was just something I did on a lark because my youngest said, well, do an unboxing. I was like, you know what? I think I will, because it looks easy. <laughs> and then just falling in love with it. And then like upping, upping the game and getting more production value in it and then building that community and the subscribers and stuff like that. And so now it's just like, I, th I think it, we're at 17, 17K subs subscribers and I started with like 10 and I didn't think I'd get more than a hundred to be honest like for me a hundred subscribers would be like <laughs> right you people are watching do. this right yeah exactly so now it's at like 17 I'm like oh my god but I love it I love the community the people who are on the chats are great we're all nerds we chat with each other um we enjoy the experience and yeah, it's so a fun hang yeah. your, your fun boxings are a fun hang so I really and, and occasionally we get to see you struggle with tiny things and screws and magnets and my nemesis small parts <laughs> itty bitty bits oh my god I'm still having fun <laughs> at magnet. so dumb maybe you need batteries. to open things on a tray that has a ridge <laughs> around it that way things can, can be caught by the ridge of the tray trays are for the weak <laughs> just like spreadsheets oh the next <laughs> next time you can't find a screw <laughs> i said trays for the week ah uh, irony I I, I, that's why i say things like that because i know it's gonna bite me in the ass but that i think everybody <laughs> I, I the joy is having that happen and having everybody laugh about it i think is 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 fun too it's just like when that magnet went you the the, the chat lit up and people were just losing their minds he's gonna do it he's gonna oh so many people made money off of that no oh, yeah a heavy it, betting it, pool going go and it's like wow my misery is bringing everyone so much joy okay <laughs> i'll wear that hat i'll wear that but i have seen you you will persist just you <laughs> fighting that controller when when we didn't even know this and watching you play so you were playing jedi fallen order out of town playing on a system that you picked up out of town yeah. And, and you know, I, I saw you went live. I was like, oh, I'll go check out and see what Paul's doing. Watch a little bit. And you were fighting a controller and you just kept dying. Yeah. And it was this controller's fault. And in my mind, I thought, well, he it's a secondhand system. It's probably the only controller he has. <laughs> and this is just making do because he wants to play the game and he's streaming, knowing that you had yeah. the ability to try a different controller, not after one. Not after two, but almost three hours of that wonky controller is a testament to something. And I don't know what, but whatever it is, it is a true testament to it. I, I call it the too stupid and too stubborn to quit is what I call it. <laughs> uh, that's served me in my acting career. I mean, a lot of people are like, wow, how did I was just too stupid and too stubborn to quit, which is why I, I hung it. I toughed it out and I eventually was able to get through it. Now, in this case with the controller, it was I was about to throw through through the TV. So I thought and I didn't want to believe like I thought, oh, maybe maybe it is just me. But after three hours, I was like, confirm because once I swapped over, <laughs> it was instantaneous. Was like, oh, you shit. flew right through that section. Yeah. And it was like, OK, yeah, that's that's on me then. That's on <laughs> I didn't want to believe that that controller was so bad, though, right? You know, because it always feels like, oh, you're just making excuses. You're doing this, you're doing that. And and it was just like, oh, OK. But, but you had played the game before, so you know how it should feel. Yeah, and that's why. But then I also had been drinking, though. <laughs> there was probably a small element of that in that so stubbornness. Like, Maybe I'm just a little bit drunk. And you lose track of time. Like, you do lose track of time. <laughs> so, and... Yeah. So I hope you kept that controller. I hope that has a place of honor, that wonky it, controller somewhere. Yeah. No, it's there. It's, that needs, it's that needs to be a back. channel icon or a giveaway. Someone oh, yeah. should be able to win your your crap controller. Yeah. But whoever wins it has to play a game with right. it. Right. <laughs> and they'll fly through and go, there's nothing wrong with this controller. Do that. Don't offer them like a picture, sign pictures, then they go with it. But right. <laughs> like it's certified. This is a certified shitty controller. COA baby. Sign that certificate <laughs> of authenticity. Yeah, but they have to stream. Yeah. <laughs> they have to stream an hour with that controller. 
Oh, and you know, before they get it, I'm going to be in there in the guts, like wrecking it even more just so on the off chance it was me. Was like, no, so no. much honey on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> there were, you know, it was funny though, because there was dust. There were like dusty bits coming from the, from the stick. And I noticed it like the day before. It's like, oh, what? I thought it was like weird dust, but it was like, it was actual, it was grinding or wearing away. And like, it and was so just shavings off. of the, of the, the plastic. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> oh, that's why it's broken. Okay. okay. Well, please share it. Please share yeah. it on the next fun boxing. Please show everyone that that thing still exists because that is an icon now of your streams. <laughs> that control profanity oh my god oh well the profanity was a sublime bonus <laughs> uh speaking of which we're at number three this is the halfway point on your list oh yeah yeah number three is and we started talking about him it's right up there the hot toys one one scale group which is also yep. right there um i am biased in this like i've actually been lucky enough to hold the hero prop of, of Grogu, not the non animatronic one, the static piece that they'll have, but it, this, the make of it is just tremendous, right? Like there is, it's silicone, it jiggles, you know, the slate, the hair punching is all across the ears, the eyes, the eyes, they look into your soul. And so when Sideshow had their statue at come out, that was the first thing I'd ever ordered from Sideshow because I'd always looked at Sideshow and gone, that shit's too expensive. Like this is high, that's high end premium stuff. And they got that out fast. I mean, there yeah. was a Grogu desert of so, material yeah. available, right? Like that was like one of the first quality accurate pieces to come out. And so like, that was like, I saw that being offered and I was like, Insta, Insta pre-order. And it was just like, and then it came out and I remember looking and going, oh my God, but feeling a bit disappointed to be honest, when I got the, the sideshow one, just because, I mean, it was a statue, so it was solid. Right, it looks great. Uh, the paint scheme, the hair was great, but it didn't extend to the ears. Uh, obviously, we've, we've already talked about the cloak that he wears, and I knew that was screen accurate. And it was it was great, but I wanted that malleability. I wanted the softness of the ears. You wanted then, the light to play, yeah, on that silicone. Exactly, and then then I saw that Hot Toys had their version i was like oh damn and you could swap out the ears and you can open the mouth and little teeth and i was like <gasps> so but of course they those suckers sold out so quick and i so i had to get i got mine through a third party seller from a shop in toronto called mothership and i like ordered that and it came and it was just like you know the silicone that that's it felt right you know what I mean? The feeling that you see it behind it in the ears and the fact that you could open the mouth and and just changing the position of the mouth, changing the expression of the eyes was tremendous. And the right. ears as well, you could change the positions and that you could pose it and you could have them sitting or standing or, or doing whatnot. And so that for me, uh, in terms of a one to one scale, so you've gone from one six to one quarter to <laughs> you've been, one. You've one. been creeping your way up. There you go. So uh, I, I love, and that's why he's on display back there because he can sit down and he fits in there. And right now I have him with the retro uh, Mandalorian uh, figures, the 3.75 inch uh, figures, because they're all sort of there, which is great. And that's the whole wave. Uh, and I thought, you know, that that'll do for now because what I actually do have is because beside him, I have the Mandalorian helmet with Mando season one. Uh, Hot Toys one six scale with the little one six scale Grogu, um, but I'm gonna get the I have the Durasteel version of uh, the you know the, from Episode one how he looks with the the brown armor. Right. I'm gonna put him in there with with Grogu because I think uh -huh. that that'll be a nice. So I'm gonna move out those those uh, those retro uh, figs and put in the the other one. But it, because there's something about when he first meets Grogu, he's wearing that armor. He's not he doesn't have the Beskar. He's just got that. And there's something about that, that, that iconic pose where he's, you know, he's in the pram. That's Sistine and, Chapel. Yeah, pose. exactly. And so there's something I, I really, I'm drawn to. So yeah, that one-to-one -one scale is just, I think, sublime. I, when really I was talking, do. when I was talking with Norm Chan from Tested, we were talking about that, that he feels the sideshow is more accurate proportion wise to the prop. Okay. But the thing about the hot toys is it's like your emotional memory 
yeah. of what you feel Grogu should be. Yeah. So and, it hits those emotional notes. And it really is. For me, it's the tactile version. Like you can, when, he, when you touch his face, that's closer to what they use on screen because it's all silicone and it's, it's malleable. Like it jiggles and it feels like alien skin, right? Like it just feels more real. Whereas the, the statue, it's a statue. It's hard, it's resin, it's painted beautifully, but there's something very cold and impersonal about it. Whereas the hot toy one, you could, you can cradle him, you can open his <laughs> mouth, you can squeeze his, his little feet. Nose. Yeah, right? And so for me, that hits your, yeah, that's absolutely right. The emotional resonance of the hot toy one feels better. Like it's just more right. Which I think is, you know, and, and I, you know, I was with Sideshow. I remember getting stuff from Sideshow in the early 2000s and mm -hmm. they were doing like the Monty Python figures and they were, they were mainly known as like a war line. Like they would do historical battle figures. Right. Uh, and that was their bread and butter. And they eventually, they started slowly breaking out and doing pop culture licenses, but you know, some of their early stuff great for the time in the six scale. But if you look at like their early Han, their early Luke, their early yeah. Leia, they sculpt very painted, very paint it's, they some of them have great sculpts right. beneath them but it's just something yeah. toy toy there's toy about it and i remember around the end of the 2000s for the first time on the internet coming across a picture of hot toys first big release which was the godfather figures mm -hmm. the vito corleone right and it was just like a rack of heads of the painted heads and someone telling me that that was a toy right and you're like, no, that has like life in the eyes. There, there is, you know, that there's a depth to the skin to that. Yeah. There's like, you can't, that's not a toy. Surely no one, that's weird magic. Someone can't do that. That's no, that's impossible. Someone's yeah. made up some pact. <laughs> With the devil. Yeah. Some and Faustian you... pact to get these <laughs> realistic little, uh, yeah. and then seeing in for the first time and what a revelation. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, the early ones, early two. 2010s whenever the first ones started coming out from hot toys beyond that because i have a lot of the early avengers releases right that they were doing before they even started doing star wars and just looking at that and comparing them to the sideshow and i think even now i mean sideshow has done a lot of great aliens hot toys never has really leaned into doing the aliens mm -hmm. if you notice like it's not you know we're not getting uh, an admiral akbar or any of the aliens whereas you know i have a cantina players i have the bith Right. I'd show Cantina aliens uh, or a bib Fortuna for right. my, my job of the hut from sideshow. Uh, but if you hold their humans together, there's still a difference. Hot toys just has that little something extra in the eyes, the way the light catches it. Yeah. They like, Oh, this is, this is magic. There's something about that. And again, yeah. no slight on hide a sideshow because they've done no. tremendous work. Their their in house art department and like they it, it is it's stunning. Uh, if you ever get a chance to get out to Thousand Oaks, uh, it is and and a chance to get a tour of so I like you, you will spend hours out there and it's it's a great community that they've built out there of artists and it's very open and uh, very collaborative, which is great. And uh, and they're one of the few companies from that era that have survived. Yeah, like they found a way. Like when Master Replicas fell by the wayside and Palace, all these great companies that were doing amazing work that weren't able to weather yeah. the fickle market and just the global economy. Yeah. But that sideshow is still there. And we wouldn't have hot toys in this country if it wasn't for sideshow sure enough. being the official seller. They are, they are, yeah, they're they are my enablers too, right? Like, <laughs> they, like, and oh. they know. They know. They know <laughs> they have us. All those little teases. It's like just, just tell us. Just you know, you know it's sold. It's already sold. <laughs> but this is what up. I love. They don't take us for granted. You know what no, I mean? No, because I think they've seen enough of their competitors fall by the wayside. Yeah. Over the years. Yeah. And know how fickle the market is, and how fickle collectors are. Like they'll turn on a dime if a, if a, a quality of something goes south. Yeah. And I know I'll walk away from something. Oh, that's just that's no good anymore. Yeah. No, but yeah, and that's the thing. They strive for excellence. They I think they really do care about the collectors. 
and their interaction with the fans is great too. Like they have like their social media content, their YouTube channels, great. Their unboxings, their first reveals, the game shows that they have, like oh. it's all really, really great content. Right from the start, I'll give a certain shout out to one of the founders of the company who I worked with for years, Robin. Where you're out there, uh, all that social media, all that interaction, that was all Robin building that community over the years and really being the person coordinating that outreach and and you know contests and all the fun at conventions and making it feel interesting and fun and exciting uh so shout out to robin and all the work that she did at sideshow and still continues to do at sideshow when she was you know when it was a very tiny company and it was just like oh it's just a couple of us trying to do our best uh and then growing into what it's become right yeah no but yeah incredible enablers <laughs> awful awful people who <laughs> prey upon our weakness they know they have us yeah uh so your number two selection number two is um k2so who's in there rogue one my first experience with die cast metal parts i'm gonna try and get mine out right now so i can show it because okay. i actually this is all happenstance you can let everyone know you didn't tell me i no, specifically I did not. said do not I tell me not. what you were choosing and the fact that i've been able to now have three of your choices there you go oh and i'm Oops. about to knock over c3po yeah so I, I i can get i can get mine another shout out oh i got him out so another shout out to sideshow and their attention to weird details do you uh uh from forbidden planet mm -hmm. they did a robbie the robot okay have you ever seen their Robbie the Robot? Yeah. 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 So, so what's incredible about their six scale Robbie the Robot, and this was 2009, 2008, you can take the top off and it has the performer in six scale inside the Robbie the Robot. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So talk yeah. about just the accuracy of, yeah. and he's there, he's got his arms through. through the, oh my God, that's brilliant. And so. The, the k2so this is what i love about it because it is I, I wish the battery life on the eyes lasted a little bit longer that's that's the only problem i have with those tiny across little across the board I they just say. they go right which is um the fingers this is what i love you don't need to swap out the hands because each of those fingers if you look at it it's you fully can they are fully machined and they're they are a minute like it's like a real little mechanical we'll hand up, we'll bring can, up this one have him grip things you can what everybody does at the beginning i mean i did it was there you go you, you he's k2so flipping the bird because you go yeah because he can so you have him <laughs> I, he was given the double birds it's like look what you can do and it's like k2so flipping everybody off yeah well, because, it's what he would do right and that's I mean, what he would I mean, do that's the attitude he would have and it's that's for me and just because he's so much taller than a regular six scale because you know, he is like the, the, the KX droids are, are like, so I think an average of seven or eight feet. So here's him. And there, Chris, Chris Gale is Leia. And she's short, like she's five yeah. foot. I mean, we're, show, we're showing pretty much the full range yeah. right now, if we're going to go scale wise <laughs> from Carrie Fisher to K2SO. And again, in terms of the build quality for it as well, I just love the metal the die cast in there it gives him it makes him seem he's so cold. much more real he's cold right? right now yeah yeah it's like that's a droid he could light up and walk away in it like in, in my mind he is complete he's just deactivated right now but those eyes if they spark up he could he could run around and the like, little this yep. nuance of a head tilt yep it's it's incredible how that bit of articulation informs emotion informs mood uh it, it's really really cool now those two side the the antennae of the back like you got to be careful with those because i almost busted one uh yeah. that's the only that's the only weakness in it and the one thing that i do worry about sometimes is the joints losing uh sometimes the, the stiffness and like them becoming too loose right um but well i, I mean, can yeah. i can mine has been since it originally came out yeah standing without a stand on my desk rock solid nice so there you go no it's it, and it's kind of heft that's like a it. lot of the hot toys feel light in your hand just because yeah. it's a lot of soft goods yeah this this 
yeah, no, he's got he's got bulk and all this. The yeah. articulation on the neck and the machining on that. And then it's a double ball joint. If anyone can see, yeah. you got a ball joint down in there, and you got one inside the head. So he's got that where he can crane his neck forward and then still look down. Right. So it's, yeah, it's as he looks down on the people he's slaughtering. Um, Your choice has worked out really well for showing off. <laughs> or I've got too many things at hand. <laughs> well, you didn't have to dig for him. Yeah, well, <laughs> a foot away. Right. No, I appreciate that. No, um, so, like I have him. It's, so, and it's just great. Like you look at, I, I just, the aesthetic design of him too, where the long arms and the long legs, but the, with the massive sort of chest, chest bit. And then, uh, you know, the head, it, it just, there's something just so yeah, otherworldly. Go, go gadget legs. Yeah. You know, like impossibly thin legs. It's like, you know, toothpicks almost, but. It's not a guy in a suit. No, that's exactly it. It's not a guy in a suit. Or if it were, it'd be like a little guy on stilts, you know. But uh, this is... Yeah, it's uh, a small child. Yeah. That is in there Or chimpanzee, right? Yeah. Just like they did in, in uh, Battlestar Galactica. You know, Muffet was a little chimp in, in that suit, so... Yeah. But it, that, for me, hits on so many levels. K2SO is one of my favorite droids of all time. So who uh, else is in your yeah, display with him? Uh, I have, well, two or two units. One from Sideshow, one from Hot Toys. So I've got the deluxe so it's, version it's of your, both. It's your droid mm -hmm. cubicle. That is. And uh, R5 D4 was in there. Um, again. But he, I, but he had a blowout? Yeah, no. Well, the, the thing <laughs> is, I got the jaw with the, with the gonk droid, the E6 power droid, and I wanted to put all the droids together in one. And I've got IG-11, but then it's like, well, he's a bounty hunter. Maybe I should put him in with the bounty hunters. And it was that whole thing. And then I, I just ended up, because it looked cleaner, putting the Jawa with the, the power droid, the R5 unit, and the Tusken Raider together. So that's kind of like a mini Tatooine sort right. of uh, uh, display down there so I, I now with your rotation theory you can have them visit their friends in other yeah. boxes yeah absolutely periodically <laughs> absolutely maybe that's it maybe the new thing on the channel each week is spot the difference behind oh. you in the display yeah. yeah i need i need to back up a bit just so you can so you can see it better but now is what's in frame all that's there how many or does it extend beyond um that's pretty much it right now i i want more room just because I've actually had to pull buckets out because I'm trying to stagger them. So it's like hot toy bucket, hot toy bucket uh, or whatever. Like, um, and I tried so to just balance. Yeah. So it's got a bit of that checkered look to it. Um, and so you don't want to go for this curational chaos of, I can't, the thing is the multiverse of madness behind <laughs> it's the rotation and the, it's of the boxes. It's also like the, all the boxes that I have to keep track of and rotate through as well. Um, and I think I what I need to do is expand because on this wall here, I have uh, a big mirror. So we're going to pull that off the wall, we're going to we're going to put either helmet stands up and so I can display all more helmets on the right. wall, maybe a small little bookshelf where I can start putting more hot toys in museum poses instead of dynamic poses uh, is another thing. Um, I mean, when are you going to start? When are you going to get the mannequins to display your oh. cosplay outfits? When When's that step? Never. I can't. There's not enough room. Look, I have come but in. You've, but you've thought about it. I have, but it's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I have. My wife would murder me. Uh, I have coming in to like a number of one six scale vehicles. So like I got the Ecto one, the Afterlife, the Blitzway one that's going to be released. That's coming in. That thing's going to be like gigantic. I have the Back to the Future time machine from Back to the Future two on pre order coming in. If no one has seen a six scale no. figure, I, I have the Batmobile from the right. 89 Batman. That they oh, did. yeah. And that was already a long vehicle. It was. <laughs> to realize that and to have a six scale Batman sitting in it, <laughs> just it's to walk by it. Right? It's surreal. Yeah. Like, oh, that's just a Batmobile there. Yeah. And it's got, you know, the little rockets will pop up. And, but <sighs> once you've, where are you putting these things? Are, you, are they just going to be set into like uh, uh, coffee tables? Are you going to start doing I don't that? Know. I don't know. 
I don't know. But I do know one thing I've had to, I'm getting rid of my Black Series. I have to make room. So the Black Series, a lot of them are going just because I have a better 1-6 scale versions of them already. The ones that I like, that I gravitate towards. I was in this mode of, oh, completionism. I need to get all the Black Series. But now I'm like, that's a fool's errand. So <laughs> they I'm have far too many. Yeah, and I'm getting rid of them, right? So it's it's just one of those things where it's just like, yeah, I have to. Uh, Are there any you're keeping that you won't get rid of? Um, yeah, the Dave Filoni one, I'm keeping. He autographed that one, so I'll keep that one. Um, and then uh, the Bad Batch. There you go. There Only you go. because I'm holding this up for everyone to see how easy it would be <laughs> for Hasbro just to pop that off. They might need a thicker body. And give us a no nonsense. Give <laughs> us a Carson Teva. Helmets easy to easy to fix that, get that properly, but come on. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> no problem. So magic of editing for anyone picking up. We had a little jump cut for this, but we're back now. I'll say there was a, a, a massive thing that we're not gonna relate to you that happened, <laughs> something extraordinary that everyone missed. And for those of you who watch. My uh, my my YouTube channel where we have the drinking game, refill your drinks. That's all I have. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> we were talking about, uh, yeah, which Black Series figures? Yeah, which ones are, are your yeah. retainers? Which one of the so, ones that you'd never part with? Besides the, Filoni, so we got Filoni, yeah. signed Filoni so far. Signed Filoni one. Uh, I want to keep the Mandalorian stuff, just because that's having been on that show. For me, like those characters, those figures, for me mean something a little bit more than just a collectible. So I and I have a lot of them. So that's I'll keep those. But all the other ones, I can I can lose, uh, you know. Um, and it's funny too because they'd all been in boxes in the back room, and it's like, oh, I forgot I had this. And so that's for me. It's like if you're collecting and you forget the stuff that you have, <laughs> maybe you didn't really need it to begin with, right? And so I think. In terms of space saving, it's it's a lot. So I'll be able to like just gain more back in terms of that, and something's got to go out. And... Well, there's like two or three of those that I can't find. So I'll ask you oh, when yeah? you're putting yeah, it. Yeah. See if you have it, because I would sure. be very happy to give any of them a new home. Okay, yeah, and that's the other thing too. As I, it's not not like I'm dumping them in the garbage or this or that or just. It really is. I have a list of, I'm curating a list and then it's like, I'm going to put it out to friends first. Say, Hey, this is what I'm getting rid of. Is there anything that catches your eye that you need? If you do, give me a shout. Otherwise, uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm just going to take it to, to the collectible shop. They'll give me a percentage of what they think they can get from them. But at the end of the day, it's like that money's already gone. It's not like I'm just, I'm trying to get my money back. I'm trying to get space back. Right. And, and you know that you're not leaving that collectible shop empty-handed yeah yeah <laughs> you're gonna use whatever that trade is we'll see I, I know that <laughs> feeling because i have been slowly going through so i have, have particularly during the 2000s i got a lot of promo stuff so okay because i do a ton of reviews and a lot of things would come in a lot of stuff after you've done it you don't it's, it wasn't something that was a, a thing that i was particularly excited about it was just yeah. a thing that arrived but that stuff has sat up in the attic that very much is the end of Raiders. And so it's been slowly but surely going through and going through. It's like, do I do I need this? Do I want this? Does it yeah. me mean anything to me? If not, I know there's other stuff that I want. Yeah. And the shop seems to want it. So if they want it and there's other stuff I want, this seems like a good mutual situation. Yeah. To free up that daunting amount of just stuff when it reaches that point mm -hmm. and knowing that I really haven't put a dent in it. <laughs> so shout out to, to memory lane collectibles in Wilmington, North Carolina. If you're ever filming in Wilmington, head out to memory lane. You will love it. There is a great little shop as you have. I mean, uh, what is your local shop that you uh, treehouse collectibles on Don Lance and salmon? That's that's my go to great shop there. Uh, what I love about it is how it's grown so much from its very humble beginnings. Um, and the the new owners, I mean, uh, it used to be, you know, you got those shops that they have 
those collectibles in the window and they've been there kind of like forever and they don't move. The sun faded ones. Yeah. And also because, you know, the, the owners, previous owners refused to, to part with it under a certain price. You go, well, no. So we just sat there and sat there and sat there and no one would buy it. This new shopkeeper is like, okay, you know, they're, they're flexible on prices. They'll negotiate or this, or that. And what I love is there's a constant flow of new items coming in and old items going out because they know it's better to sometimes take a loss on a few items if you get repeat customers and people continually right. bringing stuff in. Oh, I know that place works and they have great stuff and they'll work with you on it. Then I'm going to go yeah. to that place. Exactly. Exactly. Instead of the place that goes, no, no. And it's just like, okay, it'll sit there for another 10 years. You're not going to get hit a home run off of this. You're not going to get anybody's going to go in and go, oh, yes, I'll pay that exactly. And I'll walk away. There's a reason why it's there for so long. It's like going to a garage sale. And somebody not moving on a price. It's like, but you want to get rid of this, don't you? Like, right. Like, right. Why? And also, <laughs> maybe if you knock it down, I'll buy these three other things just because I'm looking at it. And yeah. suddenly in my mind, I'm like, I'm getting a deal on that. Might yeah. as well pick up some other stuff. Yeah, that's exactly it. So they're great there for that. The new owners are fantastic. And uh, yeah, I just, I actually, um, I've already let them know. It's a heads up. I'm getting rid of my Black Series stuff. So there's going to be a <laughs> lot of stuff coming through. Incoming. So, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be great. It'll be great. And it's still not enough room for all no. the hot toys that's coming in. No. So no. your number one choice. What first before you tell me, was it difficult to rank this up to be your number one? No. No. This one was This was always going to be Yeah, this one I, I came when I came home and had a mountain of boxes and there's certain hot toys. I mean, I'm sorry, they're all hot toys, everyone. Um no black series figures, nothing, uh, no vintage collection, although there will be some honorable mentions for that, for sure. Uh, but this one, it, it is, it has been all hot toys. Uh, I took it out, I did an unboxing of it a while ago, and uh, I never really got a chance to take it out and display it and, or really, really sort of play with it. And I was re redoing the display behind me and I spent a good three hours just tinkering with this particular hot toy blown away by its design the functionality the amount of accessories what it actually does um and it and the materials the construction of it just knocked it out of the ballpark for me on every single level and the wow factor of it uh still blows me away and the simplicity in which you can install batteries for example in on it it's just smartly designed and put out and i am talking about hot toys r2d2 the deluxe version die cast metal dome it's got like 16 different accessories from the radar dish to luke the little portable hatch where luke skywalker's lightsaber can fit in all the different armatures it's brilliant because they all use magnets to pop them in place there are no finicky little holes or whatnot they're solidly put on there the attention to detail to all the little armatures from the the welding torch to the information port to the buzz saw to the little hands that little pokers that come out um and the capper is the lights and the sound fonts on it now i'm just gonna take it out I do love how you've got it like he's just been shocked. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. With a lot of these figures, with the with the, all the accessories you get, you can't you have to pick one or the other. This right. one, it was just like, oh, it's all going in. It's all going <laughs> in. And like little touches, like, for example, the little uh, so this little power oh, the, camp, the camp light. The camp light that actually plugs into the front of R2. Uh, lights up and just for comparison uh, i'll hold up what was the only thing we had for years which was sideshows right which, which is great it's yeah, great but it's a but, very plasticky yeah this is it's i mean so i'm just trying to find this the sweet spot here yeah so this has got a die cast metal dome to it right but not only that so you get a remote control with it oh brilliant and this is what the remote control does you can 
Can you see that? There, it lights up. <laughs> and then. So he also has. So a full soundboard. Full soundboard. There's 16 different samples. Which is just, and like the lights on the back. I mean, that's just, I mean, I think on this one, we get two of the lights on the sideshow, three of the lights, yeah, three we lights, get, yeah. what the panel, we get the, that, and we get, yeah, oh, we, maybe we get the sensor light under here as well. And here's the other thing that I love too. There's the little data card that Leia, it's it that fits into the slot here, right? Like that. So you have all the accessories and like the sideshow one. There's a like the restraining bolt is a little magnet, and that's how you open right. each of the doors using that. Uh, all these armatures, they are magnet. They're they're tiny little magnetically. Yeah. Sorry, I need. Anyways, the which they, if they, you've almost lost a tiny little accessory from a hot yeah. toy is welcome. They pop in like that. Um, again, it's got weight to it, which is lovely. The third leg, like the sideshow one, pops in and out. Uh, it's on a spring loaded mechanism, so you just have to click it in. And it pops out and you can extend it fully. Uh, it also comes with, let's see if I can get it. This little hologram emitter and two oh. layers. And right. also the, and the oh. leaning up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one of her uh, crouching down, which leaning I think down I for the box. Just because but here's oh for fuck sorry nothing can be easy right <laughs> well it's a tiny little thing there you go oh that's brilliant so, and i love the little lines like the hologram lines that they've actually etched in so it looks like she's it's I mean, screen accurate to the <laughs> i feel so bad for the sideshow one right now i mean and I the guess... sideshow ones it's nice i have the deluxe version of the sideshow one in the same does he look sad enough for you? Is yeah, it, it's it, just like, you can when they're side by look, side. It look, look, oh, look, he's so hurt right now that <laughs> he's been supplanted by a superior. Oh, look, uh, oh, there you go. He's oh, uh, he can't even look. <laughs> yeah, don't be sad. <laughs> but that is, yeah, I mean that, and now on the paint job on that how much weathering because the one thing and it looks like this is much whiter there was certainly a gray cast yeah or a beige cast to the sideshow one that seems like it's a much more r2 white yeah this one is cleaner uh the sideshow one has more weathering on it, it looks like you know he's he's just been back from dagobah this is a much cleaner look although if you look at his treads and the, the wheels uh the wheel wells they're a bit scuffed up a little bit darker but for the most part he's, he's clean um you know there's a little bit of uh on the die cast uh metal dome you can there's a bit of hide my face you can see a little bit of that weathering there right but it's not demonstrative to be no. overpowering no 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 it's very very subtle and like here's luke's lightsaber that fits in here i mean it's just it was just like feature after feature after feature. And, and is all... he also come with the serving tray? No, no. The deluxe, the sideshow one does. So the so. sideshow, the one thing the sideshow has going for it still right. is he comes yeah. with the Return of the Jedi serving tray. There you go. And I haven't seen if it fits on this one, though. So it's a lot like the Grogu. <laughs> but now you're thinking about it. Now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm thinking <laughs> about it. But the sideshow one is great. It is great. It's a great one. That's the first one I unboxed uh out of the two I and, it, and it was very there. inexpensive i mean the great yeah. thing about that for its time it was not a huge sticker shock to have a great oh. r2 no and and it is great but like when you see it next to uh the hot toys one it's just the fact that hot toys the die cast takes it to the next level that's why i love the k2so as well he's he's metal that's a droid right it's not a it's not plastic painted to look metal Right. it's metal and i i love that aesthetic i just love that 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 sort of accuracy and so yeah that and that, that was the thing like i like played with this r2 like to, to take the dome off it's quite easy you rotate it to get to a certain point and it lifts right up 
and it's foolproof because they have two pegs that are different sh uh, sizes. And so they can only go a certain way and then it right. just fits right in and that's where the batteries go in, uh, into the dome. Um, he's just, I mean, I almost expect him to just keep moving on his own or for the <laughs> dome to rotate on its own. Right. But as, as a, a it's one everything you want. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and, again, what we talked about with the Grogu, it's the emotional R2. It's what yeah. you, your emotional memory of what R2 should and could be. And just, you know, the lights and then just being able to do that. <laughs> it's just like, how can you not? And, and Hot Toys has not gotten it right all the time when it comes to accessibility of battery compartments and switches. And different sizes of battery. Like, there's no uniform battery size <sighs> either. Like, you'll get a toy, like this one itself. I mean, I get it, right? Like, this tiny little power unit, it's got to have, because it's so small, you've got to have the itty bitty. Yeah. Right. But it's like my heart always sinks when I see the different battery sizes in a large tray and they go from, you know, the LR44s, <laughs> to the teeny tiny, like, are you kidding me? Those aren't batteries. Oh, and they never really indicate which direction they should go. I don't know how many times I put them in and barely got them in. And you've, you've had that spring oh. trap of when you try and get them and they just. Yep. Yeah. I hate that. It's just like, and guaranteed like it's going to happen. Just give us an arrow or tell us <laughs> which way, like bumpy you know side what? that way. If you look like really, really like you need a bright light, they actually have a little symbol like of which way the battery goes. I'm saying hot toys. We need more than that. We need... <laughs> <laughs> or 100%. when you hit it with the light, it glows. 100%. Can we get a little yeah, yeah, fluorescence yeah. on it? <clears throat> 100%, 100%. Something to make it easier <laughs> or just clearly draw it in your instructions. Right. Like you yeah. love instructions. That would I be do. great just to have I it do. like clearly delineate. That's a forearm. That's the tapered part. That's yeah. the way it's got to go. And that's literally its only job. <laughs> so come on, <laughs> let's go. Right, how many instruction manuals have you gotten where it's just like a very basic picture of it oh. with an arrow? And you're like, what does that mean? The only thing worse than that is step-by-step -step instructions would take a massive leap in between. It's like, yeah. well, how did it get to there? Why is that <laughs> suddenly over there? What right. was the process for that? Right. Why is this thing only three steps and it's taken me an hour? It's a skill. Yeah, no, no. But yeah, so many beautiful light-up features are wholly unused mm -hmm. in Hot Toys just because... I'm not going to take a jacket off to turn it on. Oh, that. Okay. So that Luke Skywalker snow speeder, I, it's gorgeous, but I almost lost my mind trying to get that arm in because oh. you've got to fit it through the flight suit. So you can't do it properly because the whole, the armhole is so narrow that you have to almost take off. And it's a flight to, suit. Had, so it's yeah, all one it piece. Yeah. And, and so I had to take off all the gack, pull the arm out of the sleeve to do it. I get the arm in, the batteries died on the light. So it doesn't even light up anymore. It's like, oh, <laughs> come on. And that's the other rule. When you get something from Hot Toys, don't trust those batteries that they come with. If you have a fresh set, put those in because the ones that they come with last for like 30 seconds. And also, we'll if you think it's fun and it's great, Try them out, see how nifty it is. But if you don't think you're going to turn that thing on often, oh, yeah. take them out. Yeah. Don't leave will, them in there. They will rot and boil over. Because the, <laughs> right? the last thing you want to see in a $300 hot toy is oh. battery corrosion lifting up the plate. Oh, yeah. That's now unremovable in a forearm. <laughs> don't oh. do that. Don't go down that path. Don't do that, folks. Uh, yeah, I, I wish the battery placement was so was easier yeah but they have to disguise like i get it they have to disguise it as well they have to be able to hide it because you don't want to see an obvious battery port either right it's like oh look yeah. there it is but right, so go through the arm like put it in the back yeah can't, can't you just have a one wire that goes down and like a contact point maybe like right. a magnetic contact point yeah. that, that makes and closes the kind of uh, odd toys were available <laughs> ask us how to make this better for for big fumbly hands uh so honorable mentions you just mentioned you might have some honorable mentions anything that didn't quite yeah make the top uh, five 
I, I really love the fact that they're going back to the retro figures. Um, just, just a little taste of home. You know, when you go to toy stores or collectible shops, they'll have the loose figures that are in, but there's something so nostalgic about that. And really what it is as well is it's the cards that they come in. It's that whole package. I mean, the five points of articulation limits those figures in terms of playability, right? Uh, and what I find, they, they turn them into art pieces where you can only pose them in one way, right? Arms up, arms halfway, one arm up, one arm down, or that's about it, or sitting or standing. So what I love is them re releasing the retro series. And so the retro series for, for the Mandalorian, for example, really stand out because the cards... What I love about the card backs is they gave it that sort of old, these have been in storage for a while, sort of look. scuffed look. Yeah. And I like that. I kind of, I really love that. And as a kid, I would have totally bought all of them at this, like I would have wanted them anyways. I, you look at them, you go, yes, I wanted, I want that figure. I want that figure. I want that figure. So that line I really, really uh, enjoyed. Um, and uh, while I haven't actually bought any yet because I, made up my mind to stop collecting 118th scale i'm not getting 1 6 scale star wars stuff anymore but the sh figure arts stuff i find really like a step that's what in my mind black series should have been you know when black right. series first started out i mean i hate to say it, but it is sort of like this sideshow hot toys comparison yeah like the great black series is great but the black series plus yeah is figure arts and and, and that's the thing it's with the Black Series, when they... And they're more expensive, don't get me wrong. They're also yeah, yeah. more expensive. <laughs> but I mean, they're, now, with the Black Series, like, they're, they're creeping up in price, too. And it's like, well, why are they so expensive? Like, guys, wh wh why? Like, you're calling it a deluxe figure. What about this figure is deluxe? And they're doing more and more. Now, of course, since I've decided to stop, they've really up. The last few releases have been really, really good. And what it's has like, tempted you the most? Um the uh, uh well the the newer the obi-wan kenobi stuff that's being released right now it's like the ben kenobi with the the the, the cloth robe right that was like oh you know the new darth darth vader i'm a sucker for i do like the fact that they're releasing all the inquisitors at the same time uh i got a cob vanth for mandalorian season two like a deluxe version uh i got that sent to me by hasbro and so that's great but i not collecting them so i'm giving that away he's like coming out via hot toys as well isn't he yeah exactly and again that's why it's easier for me to kind of go yeah okay but you're gonna make okay. him a justified figure right yes sir <laughs> <laughs> people are doing that already right they're just swapping out heads because like this head sculpt is brilliant so that's what i'm gonna do or the body's great and they were doing that for the heavy mando uh to make the the favreau version oh out of the happy hogan yeah so <laughs> You know, and, that, and that's the thing. So, yeah, those are my honorable mentions. Um, I, I will have to say, like, you know, for Black Series, it was a fairly easy decision to make because of the 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 Hot Toys coming out with the same figures that I really love. But I found that Black Series got a little bit too frustrating to collect because of all the exclusives, the poor distribution models that they had. Uh, it just wasn't funny. It got stressful trying to collect black series and so i stopped and then after a while it was just sort of like are they even trying anymore because how many repaints and repacks right. are they going to give us and like the vintage collection stuff they're knocking out of the ballpark but when black series started that was supposed to be replaced like they were going to you know phase out the vintage collection the, all that smaller stuff and move to the premium six inch format and it that's kind of like after a certain point you're like well it doesn't feel like they're even trying anymore Right. right. And They've with the changed. price creeping up the way it is. Yeah, especially. And now with the new boxes, which is, I've seen a few of them. They're not bad. Like the Ahsoka one. Right. Box art's actually kind of cool. But at the same time, um, you know, Hot Toys box art is great. Looks great. But you need to take them out of the package to really, really, you know, yeah. enjoy them. And, and that's what I love about Hot Toys. With Black Series, you know, a lot of people are mint in box collectors. And like, you will never see that figure outside of that box and it's like how can you enjoy it at least with the plastic cover you could see it inside if you're going to keep it in the box but even then 
you kind of go, you know, and I get it. They're just saying, well, we're saving the environment. No, they're saving money. Let's be frank about this. Yeah, they're no. Saving money. Because to say, we're going to get rid of this little thin piece of plastic as we sell this figure made entirely <laughs> of plastic. Knowing that you're mainly selling to collectors who are yeah. probably going to leave it in that box. Exactly. Right. So if it all goes, you know, it's all going to go. It's not just one thing or the other. And, and that's it. So, you know, I just found that after a while, it's just like, I'm not having, it just wasn't a fun line to collect anymore. And so that's why it was easy to just sort of go, okay. And I've been so much more stress-free now. Like all these figures are coming out and everybody's like scrambling to get them. I'm like, I'm cool. Like, I'm glad yeah. I jumped off that train. Right? So. <laughs> and but I mean, there's so many. Yeah. And people who really dig it, that's awesome. That is great. You go and you find your joy. It wasn't fun for me anymore. And so I've stopped. And that's that's as simple and, as it is. And the other thing is you don't get <clears throat> vehicles. Yeah. In that scale. Yeah. Well it's nearly impossible to get vehicles in that scale. I mean, the snow speeder, the TIE fighter, right? The first sort of TIE fighter, right? That was insane. The dewback. Right. But I I have the snow speeder. I'm keeping that one. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you have in it right now? Uh he comes with Dak Ralter, and I actually do have Pilot Luke, so I guess I'm keeping that one too. Yeah, see, that's how they get you. That's how it's, they get you. The slippery slope. You're not <laughs> fully out. They're not going to let you out. No, but I already have those, right? It's not like I have to buy them. And you know that Carson Teva is going to be in Black Series first. I know. I know. If if it ever comes out. Although, a uh, retro collection, Carson. They seem to be rolling out the retro a lot faster. Yeah. When well, it comes you... to the amount of character. Yeah. I mean, it's cheaper to less articulation, less paint ops uh so maybe that's the big thing let's push yeah. for them to get a carson teva in the retro collection i actually got i commissioned a custom build of a retro carson teva and uh, trapper wolf two pack and uh uh i i had five five copies made one for me one for dave filoni uh one for john favreau and the other two went to to the person who got me in touch with uh with the custom uh toy maker and i gifted them to them which is cool and i have them in the back i think i can get them if you want to wait for yeah, a second please yeah, yeah definitely you can get it i'm gonna say no to that i mean come on i would be a fool to say no to that well the excitement's building Also, thank you to everyone who's watching. This has been a supersized episode, but it's worth it. Yeah, headphones. Come on. Bane of my existence. <laughs> Here it is. So I got this custom built. Oh, that is brilliant. Set, right. So they use the, the regular X-Wing pilot bodies. They just did the the repaint of the helmets and stuff. And we got the cards sort of designed. So that's there's Trapper Wolf and there's Carson Teva. And then the back, which is really cool. And then they did the mock, sort of like the rest of the Mandalorian line. And then the, the two of us on the end of that. That is brilliant. Yeah, so so in, if we're looking at the retro line, <laughs> then you're one of only what three bearded characters. Yeah, well, Filoni would be one of them too because he kind of has a beard. And Filoni. Yeah. So it's you, Grief Karga. Yep. Filoni, and General Maydine. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it for beards, right? Wow, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, because nobody in the Imperial, on the Imperial side has a beard. I mean, Lando uh, has a mustache. None but... of the aliens. No. So, uh, no, Jack Porkins has a beard. Porkins but not, but beard. not part of the retro or the original line. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Is, he, is he a retro? Doesn't he have a... Mm -mm. Oh, no. no, just a vintage. He got a Power of the Force 2 was the first time he was ever released. Okay. In, in the 90s was the first time okay. we got a Porkins figure. There you so go. So, no, Beardy Squad. Nice. Very limited. 
We'll see. We'll you see. You and the command structure of the <laughs> Rebel Alliance. <laughs> I, I'm so glad they let me keep the beard, to be honest. I thought I was going to be under like 15 pounds of latex. Was there talk about that they ever broached the subject no. of? I just assumed like they offered me the part and I was like, yes, right away. I didn't even, I had no idea what it was. Uh, and they do code names. And so the code name for my character was foodie pilot. And I thought foodie pilot, does he like drive a space restaurant? Like what the hell? Like I, did, I had no <laughs> idea what it was. And then I thought, okay, well, he'll be an alien anyways. He's probably serving food. That's honestly how literal I was. He's got a little short order. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it turned out it's like, no, it's your face and you're an X-Wing pilot. I was like, what? That's amazing. <laughs> and I cried during my wardrobe fitting. I cried so many. Like, it was just, yeah, I mean, as a fan, to be able to just be behind the magic curtain and see, I mean, I'm an actor. I, I, I know how the industry works. I've been there. But like, to be involved in something like Star Wars that I've lived my entire life and to finally be able to sort of step across that magic line, you know, it, and, and to be able to play it in that sandbox, it gets me emotional every time because that's, that's a bucket list. That's a dream come a literal dream come true to be able to do. And that's something that I want, I've been wanting to do since I was five years old. And sometimes, you know, it's not like every day for, for my entire life is like, I want to be in a Star Wars. None of that. But it's like, you know, you have these dreams of childhood that you dismiss because they're impossible. Sometimes you're just like, you know, I want to go to, I want to go to, to Alpha Centauri. You kind of go, yeah, one day somebody might, but probably won't be you type thing. And so you forget about these dreams. You move on, you pick, you know, select other dreams, other goals. You, you, you complete some of them. You know, you miss a few, uh, a few other ones, but like to be able to do what I was, I chose to be trained, you know, like this, I wanted to be an actor. I became an actor, you know, and to, to get a gig on Star Wars, like the Mandalorian was just like, oh my God. And especially being in Canada, it's like Canada, I might as well be on the moon, right? Like <laughs> they shoot that stuff all the, like in the UK or in the States, they don't come to they Canada. They don't cast Star Wars right? or Marvel movies up here. No one no, comes right? up here. <laughs> And so that's the wave. I mean, that's, and that's the thing. That's the gift that Kim's convenience gave me and Simu and everybody who's on that show, just the opportunity, because we got the chance to show what we could do when we played three dimensional characters. And I know a lot of people will go, oh, well, he was a caricature. Is this and that? It's like, absolutely not. I mean, people who dismiss Appa or these characters on Kim's convenience as caricatures, quite frankly, have no idea what they're talking about in terms of the layers of subtlety and nuance and characterization. All they hear is a voice and they scream, oh, that's racist. And they have no idea, honestly, or they're misinformed as to the level of craft that goes into it. Because A, it is a sitcom. B, the accent is accurate to my father, uh, who I based it on, right? And it's, it's just like so much love and hard work and blood and sweat and tears and respect went into the creation of these characters. And the fact that it struck a chord with a lot of people and opened a lot of producers and directors and creators eyes as to what we could do as performers shows you one of us became a Marvel, you know, action hero. One of us gets to play in Star Wars. Uh, two, of, two of them get their own TV shows, create their own shows type thing. So it, it's a, Really, when we talk about representation mattering, it makes a big difference because it opens up opportunities. And you know what? I think for audiences, it's wonderful because you get to see a different narrative. You get to see different faces. It's fresh. It's, it's all these different things that viable, vibrant storytelling that needs to be alive, that needs to be refreshed, that has to be relevant is essential to have these new faces, new characters involved. And, you know, it's not to say just cast somebody because of the color of the skin. There has to be on the other side of it, then a level of skill, a modicum of craft involved too, right? So that the right. quality has to be there. Like it's, it's your time to shine. And so you, I always preach to, to actors, BIPOC actors, actors of color, you got to be ready to answer the bell continually. That's, that's the gig. You got to be ready. Uh, and you have to prove that you belong there. And so... That's the thing. All the hatred that was directed to Moses Ingram's way, I thought was despicable. 
And it was based on the color of her skin and her, you know, and, and people, oh, well, no, it's a character. And it's like, no, no, come on, come on. Don't, no. don't hide behind character or any of that crap. First off, it's just like, I didn't like her performance. You know, it just became this racist, misogynistic tirade. I thought she was fantastic. I thought at the end, you saw that journey. And because your answers weren't, questions weren't answered right away, people just had a hate on for her character. And it was just like, yeah. Oh, well, they wanted an easy cover for oh being God. assholes. Yeah. And that's that's literally it. So, um, I, and if, I, and if you're going to scream that loud about a show that you don't have to watch, no one's requiring you to watch it. No one's having to give up any time of your life. That's the thing. People scream diversity higher. It's like, and that's bad. Really? I mean, at the end of the day, you look at it, you go, it, it's not just for the sake of diversity. It really is diversifying. Right. And so in that sense, you can say diversity higher. Sure. But it's a galaxy. It's a universe. It's not monochromatic. Right. right. It, and, and as you said, any performer is going to have to bring yeah the performance needed no creator is going to sabotage their own project yeah by so. bringing in an inferior actor no to be Just in their project on. exactly exactly and so i i, I find that that kind of stuff i i really am bemused and disappointed by a lot of it but i think too a lot of fans who complain about it aren't really fans really yeah. you know anyone who complains people. about the opening of a door for oh people my. needs to question what what their issue is in life. So, well, I, mean, I got. I mean, it's it's fantastic that now someone watching you can put together their Carson Teva cosplay and go out and live their best beardy life. Yeah, <laughs> knowing that finally that representation is there. That they they don't have to they, you know what you can be you don't have to shave to be an X wing pilot anymore not no more you can go out and you can be and you can have now that's there that's there for people well you know it was a rebellion I'm surprised there weren't more beards to be honest <laughs> I'm surprised there weren't more beards yeah why do you have that beard <laughs> it's a rebellion right <laughs> <laughs> rebellions are built on beards come on let's go the beardy rebellion. There you go. <laughs> so have you, I mean, we haven't done, you know, conventions yet. That's probably the cruelest thing. Yeah. Amongst, you know, on the lower tier of cruelest things of the pandemic was your character hit at a time when everything shut down. Yeah. <laughs> so you who loves cosplay. Yeah. Have not done any cosplay. You didn't I've done get to go to celebration though. No, I did not get to go to sell. And that was more out of a, uh, I was shooting Avatar at the time. And uh, we were nearing the tail end of it. And I honestly, too, I wanted to go, but I also had to be very careful about catching COVID uh, and a convention that was size. Was worth the risk? No. And a number of people did catch COVID, like that I knew, like half the people that I knew who went there caught COVID. I know uh, I've heard that a few of the guests caught COVID as well. And so it's just like, do you know, it honestly surprised me. me. Yeah. How many active productions sent folks down? I know. Once but, I saw, I was like, you're putting nine octogen non octa nonagenarian John Williams on a stage at right. that. What are you doing? Why are you doing that to us? Don't do that to him. Yeah. He's a national treasure. <laughs> Harrison Ford is unkillable. We've we've no, seen that. Planes plane have tried. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Doors, nothing. Air traffic stopped. controllers will tell you nothing yeah. will take out Harrison Ford. But you're not putting nonagenarian John Williams up in that crowded, largely maskless hall. Yeah. Yeah. That, that just stunned me. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's after a certain point, you kind of go, I think people are just like, meh. <laughs> How bad could it be, right? Well, until We're you done this, right? Yeah, unless you get it. Then it's like, oh yeah. no, I could have yeah, avoided yeah. this. I know, right? And so I'm I'm that's that's the one thing I really would have loved I love would have loved to have gone. But you know what? It's cool because uh the real th I mean I I'm in season 3 of The Mandalorian, right? And I can't wait for that to come out because uh you know, I get to do a little bit more, which is great. And this character who I thought was going to be a one-off 
ended up in two episodes and then an episode of Big book of boba fett uh season three of mandalorian you know and it's like this my cup you finally hit your desk right this is going to be the action <laughs> desk this we'll is going to be the waste basket and the action desk i can say nothing filing that with oh. all of those data cards just <laughs> stacks and stacks of data cards he's never going to get to them he's going to hop oh. in his x-wing and leave those undone you know february cannot come fast enough <laughs> cannot come fast i enough. don't know how you managed to get through the time of not being able to talk about things yeah no that was tough and and to be fair you've had enough drinks on streams that you are ex the skill alone of being able to not because when you're in a stream you're just talking to yeah. fill time yeah. as you're playing so you were skilled thank you well you know, I have to say but i've learned too that so much of what you say even about other things can be taken out of context as well and misconstrued and it's just like it's really interesting and it's happened a couple of times talking about avatar things right people have asked me and i i just answered the question and like my answer has turned into this huge like like oh my god like uh you know paul sun young lee confirms avatar will be more towards a mature audience and it was like no i mean i said the themes were going to be a little bit more mature i said the, the original animated series was geared, it was on Nickelodeon for Christ's sake. So yeah, it was geared for the younger audience. This is on Netflix. It's not for little kids. Like, and that's basically all I said, but they, they, I mean, it's clickbait country, right? So everybody's yeah. like, they need that misleading headline. He said he has an inch longer mustache in this. Right? This is not. <sighs> that's it. And it's like, oh, why? <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things, you know? Like and controllers. Yeah like controllers <laughs> well i can't wait to see what happens it when mando season three anything in the future uh it was a joy to discover kim's convenience when i did thank you and uh it's a beautiful body of work that you're building and uh continuing to build i do want to share before we go the one honorable mention i have okay uh, i've been i'm done relating my list this is episode six so i've already said my five but there was a, a gift that came in the mail from a mutual friend of ours oh. that I'm going to share. So uh, it's Black Series, so you may turn your nose up at it. <laughs> but this is one I didn't have in my collection, and he kindly picked it up for me. So this is from our pal Hip Optimus Prime. Hey, Nigel. So, Nigel. <sighs> nice. The Black Series Hunt and Carbonite, the ultimate yeah. in-action figure from the <laughs> Star Wars line. Which also, as far as from a, a gift from Nigel, speaks volumes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing. Action stand if you just want to prop him up somewhere. Yep. I have him. I think he might be one that I keep. So what I'm thinking is forget this action stand, because that's desk space and shelf space. Right. I'm just going to get one of those 3M strips and just mount them on a wall. Perfect. And maybe just change his position every once in a while. Just, <laughs> you know, one day you're going to find just the outline of it. He'll be freed. Right? <laughs> you see a little footprint. Also collectible. Yes, right. Why there's not an empty Hans already out of it carbonite block. Come on, Hasbro. Step up. You know you want to sell us things. Just use the same mold. Yeah. Right. Here, come on. You just have to do the, the reverse of it. So... There we go. So thank you again for being It on. was an absolute pleasure. Please plug everything, the, the fun boxings, the channel. Yeah. Uh I have a we yeah, I've been talking about this. I have a YouTube channel called Bitter Asian Dude Inc. It's on YouTube. The main show is a live stream that's on Sundays called Fun Boxing Sundays where I open up one of my geeky collectibles, usually on a toy. Uh I do a half-ass review and we chat. We also have a drinking game during the live stream. So the drinking game is a lot of fun. Alcohol is optional. You can drink coffee, tea, water, orange juice, blue milk, whatever floats your boat. But alcohol for me makes it that much more fun. And uh, yeah, it, it is really just an evening of hanging out, talking about all things geeky and looking at toys. So that's Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. I couldn't tell you what the times were in, in the rest of the world. So, But those, those are the North American <laughs> standards there. Uh, I also have an Instagram channel, Angry Uppa. 
uh, check that out. I've got some fun content in there, some reels. I'm going to be starting to do, now that I'm back home, a little bit more sort of reviews on the run type thing where I will uh, do a more in-depth review of some of the geeky collectibles that we open up. Some comparisons, for example, the EFX Boba Fett helmet versus the Black Series uh, Boba Fett helmet. And like I've got now three different Mandalorian helmets, one from Anovos, one from Danu Anovo, Oh, one from Black Series and one from EFX. So I've got four. And so, like, to do a comparison of those would be an example of what we do. And, you need uh, to get another one and do that uh, that weathering that Tested did. That oh, yeah. Adam, Adam and Norm the did coat. on theirs. Yeah. Yeah, the clear coat really made the uh, the colors pop on that. I saw that. That, was, that looked fantastic. Yeah. I might actually do that because now I got, like, so many <laughs> Mandalorian helmets. It's nuts. You got to justify it. A channel needs content. I know I, my wife needs justification for why I got those. So please help me. Um, send in ideas. Yeah, send in ideas. And uh, we also do like on my channel, I've got, as Ken mentioned, uh, I'm I'm live streaming some Twitch, some uh, Jedi Fallen Order play. So uh, come, come for the profanity, stay for the pain as I swear my way through getting killed multiple times while struggling with the janky controller. I got to uh, see you do that final boss battle on that yeah. difficulty level. You heard what happened though, right? No. So uh, I've been playing Jedi Fallen Order, put hours and hours in, finally reached the final boss, the second sister, Trilla, spent six hours trying to defeat her. I had to move back from Vancouver home. PS4 is with my friend Ryan Dole, kept it there. Now I was under the impression that saving the game would on the PS system would put it into a in cloud, cloud. And access to it. I do not have access. So I came home to try to finish it and uh, I have to start from the beginning again. And I honestly don't know if I can have it in me to go through all that shit again, just to get my ass kicked. So what I might do is- Have them ship the system up? Yeah, or just play it on store, super easy mode up until I get there and then crank the, crank the, the difficulty up again. Just to blow through. And I would yeah. love to see a casual stream of you on the easiest mode Right. Breezing through it going, why is this so easy? Why is this? This wasn't like this before. Right. <laughs> this is like three hits. What? They're gone? It's like, I blocked that? Oh, my their, God. Their health isn't regenerating? Yeah. I mean, I've been kicked in the face more times than I care to admit. Uh, but check it out. It's it's up on my live stream. You just watch the last. <laughs> if you ever wanted time. to see yeah. a, a Twitch streamer, Captain America, his way through it, just he could do it all day. <laughs> never gonna keep him down no <laughs> and if you want to learn some new ways of swearing by all means your too. swears are incredible thank you thank you you yeah. are an artisan when it comes to swear and so i doff my cap i thank you sir it's just natural i mean that's i get master thespian that's when it truly shows through the enunciation of it <laughs> impeccable the projection <laughs> I would love to see you in a sweary production in a theater. Oh, that, that'd that be my dream, actually. Or move, because there is something very freeing, very gratifying about letting loose a string of expletives in a way. And it's got to be stream half part stream of consciousness, but also it's got to be creative. It's got to be memorable. And oh, it's, it's musical. Be, yeah. It is like sitting down for a full concert performance of profanity every time. <laughs> you stream so salute thank you <laughs> uh and so i'll say thank you to everyone for watching this i hope you've enjoyed it this has been an a, a, a an extra long episode uh but it was well worth it uh and i have not yet worked out of course what the way to close these things should be so i will say though if you like it please consider supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ken Plume. That'd be swell. Uh, you get access to stuff at even the dollar level, pretty much everything at the dollar level. So please consider that. And uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck to landing. That was perfect, Ken. <laughs>